And here is the final product. Uh, so this is what the car looks like. Uh, let me go ahead and reveal the chassis. So in order to remove the body, you need to pull a little on the sides just because of the angle, they sort of hug the tub. Uh, but here is the car. So you have all four dampers, uh, suspension, everything. So I ended up mounting the switch right here on the side. So I just perforated the chassis a little, just right there enough to have access to the port. This is the ESC. Uh, so a uh, few little notes. Uh, first, when you're building this, one of the steps that I accidentally skipped were installing the pivot balls right in there for the arms. So right in there, those are for the toe arms. So make sure you install those. Uh, there's a nut that goes down here. And then the pivot balls uh, go in there. Uh, that is one of the things. Uh, this I left to the end. So this you want approximately 26 millimeters in length right in here. Now the shocks, if you were to measure from the top of the link here to the bottom of the body of the damper, so the little cap, uh, you want to be at about 33.3 millimeters. And that's the length. If you go shorter, uh, the rod is actually going to start pushing through the plastic and then you'll see that it'll start turning gray and it'll warp a little, uh, just a tad bit. So that's about the length that you want. Uh, and the ride height is actually pretty good on the car. Uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, foams. Uh, there's these little red foams. So I have this little spare one here. Uh, those little red foams, uh, the manual uh, called for them to be here in the outputs of the front differential. Uh, when I installed them there and turned the wheel, uh, the dog bones, dog bones would fall out. So I actually installed them on this other side. So none here. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, it calls for them here, but it would push the dog bone in too far. It would fall out. So I actually installed them in the center that pushes the dog bone toward the wheel. And now they don't fall out during full articulation. Uh, but in the rear, uh, I missed putting them in the rear. Uh, so Back here, I did install them in the rear afterwards. So install those foams in there, just make sure you grease them up. So those would be the pointers. The foams are in the center and the center, not the outside. Install those little pivot balls. If you do not install them before you install this top piece, you're gonna have to remove this top, speed, top piece and then install them. So save yourself the trouble. And then 33.3, 26.6. Uh, so, this is the finished product, and now for the build. This is a build of a TC01, so this is a car made by Tamiya, so this is a touring car. Uh, they advertise this as Formula E, it's really just because of the body and the suspension. It looks pretty cool. Uh, the chassis does look like it's reinforced fiber. Uh, this actually looks pretty nice, but some of the other pieces, eh, it's just regular plastic. Uh, but we're going to see. So uh, now going through the entire build. So you're actually going to begin with uh, this part right over here on this side. And you're going to have some nuts th that are going to fall right in there. And those have to be these right over here. You gotta drop it for good luck. All right, there we go. And that lines up. Our uh, camera's probably not picking it up, but it lines up. So just grab the nut. Uh, the nylon part goes on the inside. The non-nylon goes on the outside. So if you look at the nut, nylon, that's that little rounded side that goes on the inside. So just drop it in. And you're gonna need all four. So there we go. There we have that little bit. Now just do the rears. Uh, 
And the reason why is if you do the fronts, you're gonna be messing with the rears first. If you accidentally flip this over, you might drop them. Uh, now for the next step. So you're gonna grab the parts tree with the arms, which is D and you have four. So there's four parts trees that are D and C, uh, but you need these little bits back here. These are, we're gonna, these are what are going to hold your arms. Now for these, you will need a screw and it's a 15 millimeter screw. Let's see, this looks, this is too long. It's gonna be these. Nope, way too short. Maybe it is this. Okay, so it is these. I have three, four, there we go. So I'll set four aside over here. And a little recommendation, just have a ruler or something to measure with, that way you can measure the screws. Uh, if it says 14 and the screw measures at Sorry, 15 and it measures at 14. That's the one. If they're button head screws, that's usually how it works. Uh, so don't worry about it. Now, for these, there's a little knob. That knob is going to go on the inside. So the screw is going to go out through the outside. But you're going to need a washer, and it's these larger ones. So that will go here. And you'll see the washer is about the same diameter as the plastic. Now, you're also going to put some washers on the inside. These washers on the inside, these are what are going to determine your toe. Uh, so build it per the manual. And then what you can do is you can remove, uh, let's see, I think I actually need the smaller washers here. Uh, you can actually remove or add washers. So it's the smaller ones, uh, to change the angle of the arms, because this is going to be sitting here. So if you remove a washer from the inside, it'll make it shorter on the inside to give you some toe in. Uh, or you can always add one to the outside. It will make the track a little wider. Uh, so that's something you can play with. Now, this is going to go in here. And then you're gonna grab your driver. Now, if you have a set of actual Japanese drivers, uh, that would be my recommendation. I do not, I've not purchased one. I don't use them enough, but I, I should, I should buy some, um, because the, the American Phillips drivers are not the same size. They don't fit quite well. And that is also something to keep in mind because you need the right size driver or else you're going to be ruining the heads of the screws. I'm just going to be stripping those. All right. Oops. Washers. All right. So like I said, I'm going to do two. Later on, once I put it on the setup station, I'll see how much toe it actually has. And then I'll go from there. Well, I'll have to drive it as well. See how it drives, see if it needs more toe or less toe. Uh, ideally, well, I want to be, depending on the track, maybe two and a half rear, maximum three. So if it's, if it's less than two, I definitely need more toe in or else this thing's going to be really wild and crazy in the rear. Uh, but uh, that is it. So make sure this thing's facing out. There's a little tab in there where the knob goes in. Yeah, those are the electronics back there. You can't really see them in the camera. Uh, those weigh approximately 298 grams. So I am going to weigh the car at the end uh, just to see how much it weighs, but it's going to have the electronics. So I'll minus that from it. I didn't measure the receiver. That's because I need to pull a receiver off something else right now as I'm using all of my spares. All right, so from this point, uh, we go with the arms and the arms, it's the short arms. So it's these right here and they're all the same. So they're all A, so, a. Uh, so we're gonna grab one of these and uh, these are gonna work as left and right, which is one of the nice things about this kit that left and right, it's their merit images, uh, which is fabulous. So left and right, it's a mirror image. So we'll do that. Now we need a set screw that is 15 millimeters long. Those are these guys right over here. Nope, these are too short. These back here, these look long enough. And it's these, so it's these very long ones. Which means that this. I actually wish all the screws were hex screws. That's one of the things I like about my 
M08R. The M08R, most of the screws, not all of them, but most of the screws are hex screws, uh, which is great. All right, and this is going to go in the inner hole. And I do have an electric screwdriver, but I don't want to use it. And the only reason why I'm threading in and then threading out is so that the the screw can cut. That's the only reason why. It takes a little longer. It's a little nicer job, I think. All right, so here we're gonna drive it because it has to be about even on both sides. And you can measure, you can try to eyeball, it'll be close enough. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing to the other arm. And again, it's the inner hole. And then as you're driving this in, try not to twist it or else it'll go in crooked. That's something else to keep in mind. So we'll see how durable this thing is as well. Uh, because this one's getting a 17.5, which is a good enough motor. 21.5 is a little slow, but it works. I mean, assuming you're not using any boost or timing, if you use 21.5 with some boost, then you'll be fine. It'll be plenty fast. It'll match or uh, beat a 17.5 uh, blinky. But anyway, uh, all right. So we have those, so now we need the other grub screws that are going to go right here, right toward the back, so right in here. And these are going to be used to set the droop on the screw. So these are your little droop screws. These are the eight millimeter, which are the ones that, uh, let's see, eight millimeter. These were too big for, yeah, these are too big, for, uh, not eight. So might be these. I don't know, these look like they're 10. I'll set them here just in case it is those. Uh, now the reason why I have all of this out here is because sometimes stuff is in different bags. That's the only reason why. Well, it must be these. Wait, nope, here we go. It's the fat ones. Which makes sense. Yep. All right, so it's these large ones. What are these, four millimeter? Three millimeter. Anyway, it's these, uh, which means that I think I need the other driver. So the first grub screws, uh, those were 1.5 millimeter. This is a two millimeter driver right over here. And you want to drive these, uh, you want to drive these on the, rear hole. So just make sure it's the opposite. If the arms are facing the same way, it's the opposite, it's this one. So bottom and top. That way when you flip it, they're both the top or both the bottom. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm driving it in, but then driving it out a little, just so it cuts. And you wanna make sure this thing is sticking out just under two millimeters, so it'll be 1.8 is what it recommends. And this is something that you can adjust later on, of course, once you put the car on a setup station. All right. Let's use the other one now. Right. 
this point. So we have the hinges right here. I'm gonna use some thread lock because I need some of these. They're all the same, so I'll grab these. So now we're gonna put the ends on these grub screws. Take some of the excess off. So the only thing that I did to remove the excess is put this pointing up, squeezed slightly, and then just placed it here and then just had this suck the excess. Now thread lock, to be honest, is sometimes just a preventative measure. And the reason why I'm saying that is usually many screws, as long as there's an excess amount of vibration, as long as they're torqued right, you'll be fine. All right, good stuff. So that's this one. So we've got the two. Now uh, there is a ball two that we have to install. And we'll install that one in a bit. Right now, I have to do these. Now, for those of you that are brand, brand new to the hobby, do not use red uh, thread lock. So if you use the Loctite brand, do not use the red. Uh, that one is way too strong. You're going to have a very difficult time removing some of these parts. You may actually end up damaging them while trying to remove them. That thing stays on like you wouldn't believe. There we go. All right. Go to cover this, place it back over here. Uh, all right, so at this point, I'm gonna need the other ends. So I'm gonna go back to the parts tree, but this time I'm gonna grab another one and I'm just gonna cut some of these off. So this is a D, one of the D trees. And it's one of the things I like about Timia. They usually, break off relatively uh, clean. The amount of trimming is minimal. All right, I'll use that, so I'll place it there. So now for the hinges, uh, we need to hinge everything together. Now for these, uh, we're gonna do the same thing as we did in the front. So we're gonna need one of the large washers on the outside. But this one is not necessarily tricky. Oops, and that's why you don't do it, uh, but it's all right. So remember what I told you in the beginning, you might flip it accidentally. It's, you have to drop something for good luck. That's the reason why. Uh, all right, so I'll put the pin in. Now the pin is in there and just work on one side. And then you're going to put the arm. Now the arm, if you actually pay attention, these things are gonna go the other way. So this is actually going to go on this side. So it depends on how you're holding the chassis. If you hold it this way, they're gonna slide in, just flip this and it'll slide in because you want, wait, where's it? You want the screw, that little set screw to be toward the center of the car. So it's right here. Now, once you have this, now, you can do everything else. So let me go ahead and place this in. Flip this one, which I had already flipped. And there we go. I screwed up with one of these arms. Oh, this one, no, I had not flipped it. There we go. Oh, picture is backwards now, I just noticed. As I dropped the other one for good luck as well. So looking at the picture, the grub screw actually goes toward the rear. 
All right, so grub screw is toward the rear. Just I'm holding this different orientation than I am in the front. So the scrub screw is gonna go toward the rear. And then these links, they have to go on top. And the reason why, let me put my fingers here, th this is where things are going to attach. That's the reason why. So at this point, I'm just holding it this way. All right. So now you wanna get that screw ready. So let me flip this and just lay it down. So we're gonna get this ready. We're gonna put the washer in. I'm gonna grab one of these. Remember the big washer is gonna go on the opposite side. If you put the big washer here, this little knob's not gonna let it go in. So you'll know. And then we'll grab two of these washers, run right here. And this one is ready to go. So let me just drop one of the arms because it'll be easier. And by drop, I meant remove. And we'll just deal with one. Then I'll hold this, so this, so stick it in the pin first, as I'm just gonna drop the nuts, there we go. And that's it. So right in there. And of course, I forgot to put a spacer. So on that same D tree, you have these little spacers right here. All right, so you're gonna need one of those to put in the arms, one on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and trim these out. Of course, after juggling all of that, I would do that. All right, here we go. Let's do it all again. Not a big deal. Perfect. All right. Now with these, technically you could move them and adjust the wheel base slightly. Uh, let's see the different sizes. So which one do I want? It says D2. Okay, so I want the D2. D2 is the thinner one. I want D2 on both of them. So it's the middle one that you're going to want. That is D2. Oh wait, no, that's D4. It's actually the one on the edge. Hold on. Again, before I screw up once again. D4. Okay, D2. All right, so I need to cut D2s. Great. D2's here, it's a D2, and another D2, and there's the one that was there, so we'll do that, and, all right, so I'm going to have to pull this one out in a bit, just slightly, so I can drop the nut in there. All right, that's good enough. Perfect. And this is going to be the first arm. And snug is all you need. Do not over tighten things. You're going to start breaking plastic or things are going to be binding. Uh, arm moves freely, so we are good there. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab the other arm. We're gonna do the same thing. So we need to get those D2s, uh, which means I have to go back into the parts trees. Uh, here we go, let's see, D2. And no, the numbers are not really in order. Here we go. Oh wait, this was already built. All right, good stuff. All right, 
So then we're gonna do the same thing over here. So grab one of the larger washers, put it through the screw, grab this little hinge point, go through there, grab two washers, right in here. And now, go ahead and grab the nut, drop it inside, and that is it. I hope that was all in the camera, because it's a lot easier when I'm not paying attention to the camera. And that's it. Snug is all you need. Arms move freely. We are good to go with these arms. Uh, all right, so once you do this, uh, you have to do the same thing, almost the same thing, to the front, uh, so the front end of the car. And you're going to need the lower arms, and the lower arms are going to be the same lower arms. So now, so you put these, go ahead and take these. Again, this is one of the things that is nice about the car. Uh, now the front arms are slightly different in build because you're going to have two uh, different grub screws. Now left and right doesn't matter, it's the same thing. The easiest thing's going to be to start with these large stops. So these are gonna be your, your droop screws. So go ahead and put these in. So go here. So I'm, I'm leaving this regular speed just in case you're building along. That way you can see what mistakes I'm making. You can make the same mistakes just for fun. All right, there we go. Uh, so those are the easiest. But now uh, you're gonna need the 12 millimeter, these, I think these were the 12 millimeter. 12, yes, all right. So you're gonna need two 12 millimeters and then there's some six point uh, 20 something, no, these are much longer. There's some shorter ones that we're supposed to be using. You can look for those after. Unless I misread, which is possible. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, nope, definitely misread. Okay, so it's all 12s. It's all 12s, so this is the 6.25. All right, good. Now, uh, for these, uh, orientation is going to be very important. So the reason why is you're gonna set some of these from the back and some of them from the front, which is something that you need to be careful with, which means the following. So here, if we're going from the rear of the car forward, this is going to go on the outside. And I'm driving it just so it's flush. So I have my finger here on the other side, so I already feel it. I'm gonna stop there. Now I'm gonna drive another one from the, on the other hole from the opposite side. Let me 
make any adjustments later. And that's it. So one of them goes through here, the other one goes through there, and the other side is going to be a mirror image, which means that the one that goes toward the right here on the back, this will go on the outside. Right there. And this will go in here. Right there. Just like that. So now at this point, uh, there's a, there's some washers that we have to use or I guess spacers. Uh, but the first thing is I'm gonna grab two of these and I'm gonna set the ones in the front because the ones in the front do not have a spacer. That's the reason why. So I'll go ahead and use a little thread compound, just a small amount. I really don't need that much. I'll grab this. Oops. Come on. Not working. There we go. Perfect. And these two are flush. The main thing is you, you don't want that set screw to be sticking out. All right, snug is all you need. Perfect. All right. So now we need our little spacer over here, which is an A7. So if we look at the parts trees, here is A, now I need seven. So three, four, I'm looking for something round. That is set, what, A7. All right, never mind about the parts trees. Uh, A7, I think, refers to the washer. Let's see, really quick, I'm actually using the, nope, the washer is BA13. So let me look for A7, A17, A17. All right, so it's a, it's not an issue of the parts tree, it's an issue of being able to read. <clears throat> All right, so 16, 14, 17, oh, good job. Uh, 17, so which one is 17? This is probably 14. What? All right. All right, that's probably it. Because this one's way too big. Uh, so 17, 17 is probably going to be these two. They're the same diameter, so it has to be those. So the 17 is right in between. All right, so we'll drop one of these in. And now I'll apply the thread compound. Or th Let's see, right there, small amount. We'll grab one of these ball ends. There we go, there's one. Now for the next one, I'll do the same thing. Put one of these in. A little bit of thread lock here. Snug is all you need. And really, snug is all you need. Don't over tighten these because then you're going to compress this too much. So forget about 
I mean, yes, you can always strip things, but if you compress this piece of plastic, you may not get the precise measurements that you actually want. So that's why that's important. All right, that's it. So lower arms are set. So now we can go ahead and hinge them. And the hinging process is going to be the same. So we need to find those ends, which are going to be in uh, the B trees or D trees. Sorry, it's D as in Delta. So there's two. And two. So two fronts, two rears. We need a large washer. Another large washer for these. So let's just get these ready. And then we're going to need the small washers. So small washer, there's going to be just one on each side for the very rear. We'll say these are the very rear. And then the front ones are going to use... Interesting. How many do you use? Just one. All right, so these used just one. So they're built exactly the same. All right, and the screws. So the screws, we will be needing 15 millimeters right over here. There's the 15. All right, and then uh, we're gonna be needing the four nuts, which means, one moment. All right, so I dropped this for good luck, but now I retrieved it. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna work with one. So again, the nylon goes toward the inside. The non-nylon part of the nut goes on the outside. All right, so I'm just working with one this time. And I have this right here. So these uh, set screws, I'm just gonna take this arm, flip it over, just like this. So this one's gonna go here. And I have my finger right where the nut would be. Uh, so this will go here, which means, I'll actually set this down, that I need one of these, and now I'm going to need some of those D2 spacers. So I need to go back to the tree, find D2, I'm going to remove D2 from here. Alright, let's see. D2. All right. D2. Here's the D2. I'm just gonna get all four of them. I already know I need the four. Well, this was a D2. And D2. So when you look at the parts tree, there's a two. It's gonna be these two. It's actually both of them. All right, so we'll need one in the front one in the rear, and this should be toward the rear of the car, which I still need to assemble this thing. All right, so this will go here, right there. That's the first one that's going in. I guess I could always put the other one as well. We'll see if that's a good idea or not. Uh, right in here. So I guess I could do that. So now the large washer. I'll go in there. I don't really want to do them both. And so now we do the small washer. So it's just one and one for this part of the car. Uh, and that's it. I can draw. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna try to take a. Not necessarily a shortcut, but I'm trying to do them both at the same time, see how it works out. All right, so they're both in. Perfect. Right in here. And, oh, there we go. So that worked perfectly, not all right. Ah, I could have managed. I just don't feel like trying it out. So here we go. Oh. That didn't fall. Let's try to take this guy out. There we go. All right. So I'll tighten those at the end. Let me get 
this one in. So I need the little spacer. Oh, good job. Well done. I completely missed. There we go. Oh, wait. That was the bottom one. Oh, great. All right. Redo. No such thing. All right. We'll put this one here. This goes here. So that one's set and ready. I'll put one of these. Okay, so there's a little shim spacer. Fell out again. All right, here we go. All right, so there's that nut. So I'm just checking. All right, that one is there. Perfect. So now we go ahead and install. No. Nope. Hopefully, you're having a much easier time. I know I felt that I was, as I was trying to put this inside, I was feeling that the screw was falling out. I was accidentally pulling on it, even though I didn't want to. There we go. That's in, that nut is in the correct slot. And now I can tighten these. All right, so we're gonna to go to the other side, except for this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and install this first before I deal with any of the hinges. So I won't try anything silly. All right, so we'll do this first. I don't need this, I need this. And we'll drop one of these. Don't forget the orientation for the nylon. All right, good stuff. That drops in place. All right, that one is set. Now, uh, there are a few things I need to do. Number one, concentrate. Two, find the shim. Oh, that was surprisingly quick. I'm glad I found it. I, would have, I wasn't too happy with the fact that I dropped it. So it wasn't too bad. So I'll go ahead and prep this other side. Now I have the two little nylons there. I keep calling them nylons. All right. Now you don't have to put both of them on. Oh my God. Did you catch it? Did you see it? You so did. I put the arm on backwards. Well done. Well, well done. See those? Yeah, don't do that. After all of that, all right, so what I have to do is this arm, I have to flip this arm. So we'll come off. There's a nylon. There's the other one. We'll flip it. 
Now, building kits, sometimes you'll make mistakes, right? And then you'll fix them. And to be honest, that's what takes the longest because now you're doing something again. Uh, so take your time. Don't do what I do. Well, do the stuff I do right. Don't make the mistakes I make. All right. So, wait, can I put them there? Yes. Good job. And I drop them that. All right, good stuff. Now I need it. And here we go. Drop it on the slot. At least I didn't make any mistakes cutting something. There's no repairing that. This is an easy fix, a tedious one, but an easy fix. All right, let's not make the same mistake with the other side. There we go. All right. And we'll set this in. Now that it's set, we'll grab the other nut, drop it in, and there. Oh, damn it. All right. Perfect. All right, so that's, uh, those are the arms. Uh, fairly painless, not, uh, but yeah. Arms are there, they all move freely, and that's the most important thing. And this thing's already taken shape. I mean, it looks pretty nice. Uh, so at this point, this is somewhat of an, somewhat odd. And the reason why I say it's somewhat odd is because the electronics go in first, like right away. Usually they go in later in other builds, but in this one, they go in now. So servo, I'll try to place this right here. So for the servo, I'm gonna be using this ProTech. You don't have to use a ProTech. Uh, but you should be using a low-profile servo, ideally. Now, I like these servos. They're very, very smooth. They last a long time. Uh, little by little, this is what I've been sort of shifting to. Uh, I used to use different brands, uh, but these I've proven to be smooth and reliable. I don't know who makes them, but there's there's a, a company that actually fabricates ProTech for a main. The only reason why that matters is because their servos might be less expensive. Uh, all right, so there's some spacers that are going to be needed here because this is about three, two, two and a half millimeters. There's about, there's a gap. There is a gap. Uh, which means, oh, that's right, I haven't gotten the base. So I need to find the A tree. Uh, is this the A tree? A, all right, so this is the A tree. And from the A tree, we're gonna need A4, and we're also gonna need B5. Uh, so let's look for A4, so the numbers are over here. There's a six, here's a four. So it's this guy right here. So we're gonna need two of those. So there's one, let's grab the other A tree. 
So if you ever hear me complain about Tamiya kits, this is why I complain about Tamiya kits. Um, most other kits, if you look at X-Ray, uh, Techno, for example, Associated sometimes screws things up too, but uh, whenever you're building something, everything is in that bag or everything is in that tree. Versus over here, stuff is mixed. But I mean, I guess it's it's all right. You're gonna build it eventually. You just have to find the correct trees. These little spur trees. What number is this? What letter? All right, so much for that. Let's see, this is D, C. All right, so D and C. And all D's and C's. B, okay, B is the one with the big giant bumper. Uh, and it's this little triangle right over here. So there's B, B5. All right, now for this one, there is an orientation. So one of the things that you need to note is that the tabs go up. So there's these two big giant tabs. Those are going to be facing up. I don't even think I need this. This is probably for the transponder. Let's go ahead and look this. Attaching steering servo. That is probably for the transponder. Why would I want this? All right. I'm going to, I don't want to. I may not install this, and the reason why is this is for the transponder. So the transponder is gonna go right in here and then you would put a clip through it, but I'm not gonna be using uh, house transponders. I have my own, uh, so I can set that aside and just not use it. So I'm gonna be using these here, and these are both going to be pointing in the same direction, which is that way. So if you look at these little P's, you flip it, it's gonna go like this. So see that countersunk bit? See how it's countersunk? So this is actually gonna be down because the screw would go from the bottom up to hold that transponder mount. That's the reason why. So this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and slide right in through here. And once you do, you can see that That's the perfect size for a spacer that you need. Uh, and the screws that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. So 10 millimeter is gonna go on the inside. Sorry, 12 millimeter goes on the inside. 10 millimeter goes on the outside. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's actually 12 millimeters for both. So I apologize. I'm looking at this. So it's pointing arrow, has two different size screws. I guess you can use whichever one. It won't matter depending on your servo, possibly. Uh, so we have those little washers. I'm probably not gonna use the washers. And the reason why is the servo came with these little cups. So I'm just gonna be using these because this helps align the servo as well. That's the reason why. So that's something that I am doing different from the manual. Keep that in mind. Uh, so that being said, I can use a it says three millimeter. So it's a three millimeter spacer. These are the little plastic ones. Uh, VA 13, maybe. Nope, nope, those aren't plastic. Uh, but anyway, not gonna use those because I'm gonna use these little things that came with the servo. So let's find those 12s. All right, 12. Here's my handy dandy ruler. Way too short. Uh, that's a 10. Probably these right over here. And that's a 12. All right, so it's those four. Well, that being said, let's go ahead and use these. Now, one of the things that I just realized I skipped, I skipped installing the balls. Uh, that's all right, no big deal. Uh, 
And I'm just getting these started. I'm not screwing them all the way in yet because I want to make sure all four of them are installed. It makes everything easy. Well, easier. If you drive one all the way in, then you have to adjust a piece of plastic. Now it's going to be too tight, not to mention that you probably compress that plastic. Uh, so you could damage something. But then if you tighten one side, it might be difficult to set the other. So just put all the four screws in there so that nothing shifts, so that everything just goes through smoothly. And so this is it. So now I can go ahead and shift this, adjust it however I need, drive it a little closer. Go. And the reason why I did that is to make sure that all four actually fit in the correct slots, which they do. So now I can actually start driving them all the way in. And remember, snug is all you need. Do not over tighten things. And no, I'm not following the order because according to the or order of things, uh, I should have put the servo horn, installed the servo horn, which I did not. And I'm not going to yet. I'm gonna make sure this is all installed. And one of the reasons why is I have not run power to the servo. And it has to be, this thing has to be 180 degrees, right? So zero, 90, 180. So it has to point left. Uh, that's the reason why. Since I've not run power, I don't know if this is zeroed. And if it's not zero, my, if I install it now, I'm gonna, well, I guess I can install and then I'll, I can show you if it's not zero, zeroed in. Uh, so let's go ahead and do it. Why not? Why not? Point is you're gonna have to remove it and then shift it and adjust it. So now we want the, let's see, Sanva Futaba, Futaba. Futaba, I believe, is the 25 millimeter. Yes. All right, good stuff. And I'm going to use the long one. I always use the long one. And here we go. We need this flat one right here. The flat one's an important one. Go ahead and trim a little. Uh, use snips. Knife can be potentially dangerous. You could accidentally cut yourself. Uh, if you have a lot of experience, then I guess, well, do as you please, but just be very, very careful when handling sharp, pointy things. All right, good stuff. So at this point, I'm gonna grab the bottom half. This is the one with the teeth. And I'm gonna install the springs. So the springs, uh, there's a total of three springs in here. Uh, two of the springs are the same size. So grab the small spring, which is these, which are these goldish looking springs and install one of those inside. So that one goes in there. Now you're going to grab the other gold spring. Do you actually need both of them? I mean, according to the diagram, it shows both of them. It seems like a lot of spring. All right. Well, there we go. I don't actually think you need so many springs. This doesn't look right. Not right at all. Make sure you're wearing eye protection, just in case. All right, I will be removing one of these. This is, this doesn't feel right. So I'll remove one of these for now. The picture has them both. Doesn't make sense though. Maybe it does. I'm just not understanding. All right, here we go. All right, good stuff. Let's see, two springs. Hey, right, what do you know? This fits perfectly. Almost. There we go. Uh, so 
So the answer is yes, I'm only using two springs because two springs actually fit. I'm not gonna use the third one. You can try using the third one. I'm not. All right. And then this thing will click on just like that. The teeth go at the bottom. This thing, think about it as a washer. This just goes on top. All right, and this would go here. And like I said, it goes 180 degrees. If you're wondering why I'm saying 180 degrees instead of 90, it's because this is zero. 90, 180, 270, 360, we're back to zero. That's the reason why. So why this is the X. All right, now, normally I would put thread lock on this thing. I'm not going to, because I'm just gonna set it here for now, because I'll probably end up removing it. So I didn't even fully tighten it, but this is the way it would look. All right, that being said, so that is there. Now I'm supposed to install the electronics and I'm gonna use some alcohol a little piece of towel that I already had ready and I'm going to start wiping some of the areas off. So based on what I can see here, if you look at the manual, uh, I need some double stick tape. Okay, ESC should go on the left side and that's my receiver, which I don't have a receiver right now. Uh, that's available for this. I can, so you know what? I'm gonna pull a receiver really quick. Vehicle. And call it good. <laughs> that was quick. All right, here we go. Right, right there. There's a the receiver. Found it. All right. Good stuff. Now, when, you, when you're wiping, don't overdo the alcohol. Uh, but if you do, don't worry about it. Just make sure that you wipe off the excess afterwards. And when you're cleaning plastics or wherever it is, circular motion is the best motion. I'm using the dry side to remove some of the excess. All right, that one's ready. And yes, the motor is attached. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's set this this way. So now I'm gonna need some double stick tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my roll which is right over here and then that little blade let's go ahead and cut a little strip for the receiver the receiver does not need much tape i actually recommend that you don't cover the entire thing with tape maybe half and the reason why even less than half the reason why is if you have to remove it it's a pain to remove and you may actually break the case or split the case when trying to remove it so that's the reason why. That's the most I would probably do, just that little amount. Uh, the ESC, definitely use a little more. Uh, but you don't have to cover the entire base because this is a vehicle that's going to be jumping up in the air, you know, 10 meters off the ground or whatever it is, you know, 30 some odd feet. So that's plenty. This is actually more than enough for the purpose of this vehicle. If you take an impact and it's hard enough to make the ESC bounce off, chances are you destroyed the entire car. So it doesn't matter at that point. And that's the reason. All right, now the motor, if I'm not mistaken, the motor actually goes on that side. Uh, it could be wrong. And the reason why is the orientation is going to matter for my ESC. Uh, so the ESC will go here, wires go that way. All right, good stuff. Oh, well, 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 this certainly does not fit. Uh, nope. Let's 
Let's see, let's try flipping it. All right, perfect. So I have to turn the ESC, have the wires facing this way. Hopefully the wires are long enough. If not, I'm gonna have to remove them. Or I can turn, I mean, I do have wires I could solder. Oh, that's not gonna work. All right, uh, so more than likely I'm going to have to replace the wiring. This ESC may not work. Hmm. All right. So I may have to get a different ESC. I may have to get it just stock, which is a smaller ESC. Figure this one out later. Uh, I'm going to skip the electronics. Uh, what's going to end up happening is I'm just going to build some stuff. And then I'm going to have to take it apart again to finish building. Because, as you can see... This fits this way, but then that's not going to fit right in there. Uh, so, so I'll leave this off to the side, so I'm going to skip the electronics, so there's no point in removing that receiver then. Unless I do the ESC on this other side, and then the receiver on this side, which is the opposite of what the diagram shows. But in order to see if this would actually work, see this looks like it would actually work, uh, I have to build more of the car and see if I can just swap them left and right, which is a possibility. It is a possibility. So we will see. So I'm just going to continue on, and at this point I'm going to continue on with the gearbox. All right, see, gearbox. All right, so gearbox, so again, if I ever complain about Tamiya, this is why. So gearbox, we need to go into T, so it's the T parts tree. Then we need to find the A parts tree, which are right here. Uh, again, uh, if this were Techno or Associated, that wouldn't be the case. Whatever you use for that section of the build will be in that section uh, associated for the most part. Sometimes it's just a little screw that is in a different bag or something. But those are some of the reasons why I complain. Uh, but we have this. And then we need two little tabs from the A trees. I believe this is the A tree. This is the A tree. And the tabs that we need are going to be the 16. So it's this little guy right over here. That's one. So we'll grab the other A tree. And it's right over here. Oh, I broke off. All right, those are fine. Uh, all right, good stuff. And then we're going to need these nuts right over here, so it'll be fine. So we have them there. And we have this right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide a nut in there. So nut will go, let's see, flat side toward the bottom. And that will slide in. Then I will go ahead and place this in here. And this is simply going to secure the nut. And then there's a tiny little screw right here, this little guy, uh, which is a 1.5 millimeter driver. Why? I have no idea why. Uh, just look for the countersunk screw. There we go. And I will drive this in. Oh, actually, there we go. And now we go to the other side, do the same thing. So you grab the nut. Now again, the one side is flatter than the other, so make sure the flat side is toward the bottom. Now I go ahead and grab this, and that goes in there. And I go ahead and put this screw right in here. <clears throat> and that goes in here. Right in there, that's it. So we have this, and I can go ahead and grab this, and it's gonna go on this face right over here. So it's the top two holes, these top two will go right with these top two, so I'll go right in here. And the screws that you want are machine screws, they're countersunk screws, so the eight millimeter screws, which are these right here. Something that you 
could do is pre-thread everything, but it's, it's up to you. So I'll just get one started. I'll grab this one. And I'll drive these two close, but not fully tight because I still need a, a, a third screw. And I need that third screw in the very bottom. This one right here. And now that I have this, I can go ahead and grab the bearings. I don't remember if I oiled them. Uh, so that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little drop of this oil. This is the uh, Phantom Go Go Juice. just in case I forgot. All right, good stuff. Now, there is a bearing right here that has a crown or this little hat. Uh, let's see, camera, well, this one right here. That's the one we're going to grab. So we're gonna grab that one, and that bearing will go right in there. So that hat prevents it from going all the way through. That's what that one is for. So that goes in there, already put some bearing oil, and that works. So now I'm gonna need the shaft, and the shaft that I need is this one right here. Now there's a long side and a short side. I will go ahead and flip it this way, and the reason for this is I'm going to need, where's that cup? Hmm, that's a good question. I need the little shaft end, the little cup. Oh, here it is. All the way to this other side. So this will go here, right there. And then the pin This the wrong side. Nope, that is the correct one. So it's just not going in straight. That's what's happening. There we go. And that's it. The pin is in there. And be careful not to drop the pin. I'm gonna take this little O-ring and I'm gonna slide it over and this will hold the pin in place. And that's it. So eventually if this dries out or breaks, then make sure you replace it quickly before you lose that pin. Uh, that's just a quick little note. Uh, you could put some grease on this if you wanted to. Uh, there's no harm in not putting grease there. Uh, let's see. All right, so at this point, uh, there's two shims that go in here. And just to make sure uh, to, yep, there it. So there are point two shims, two of them, which is gonna go all the way. And then there's a bearing. 
Actually, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. It goes on the short side. So let me correct that. So this should go on the short side based on the picture. If we look at the picture, it goes on the short side, not the long side. We'll take the shims out just so I don't lose them in the process of removing this. And the O-ring, you should be able to just do this with your nail, uh, but be careful not to damage the O-ring. And all I was doing was just rolling it. And that was it. Grab another pin. Push up, oh, nope, that's way too big. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I have a little piece of wire or something I can stick in here. Oh, actually, I have a piece of wire. Let's use this. All right, so I have a piece of wire over here. There we go. Perfect. All right, so let's take the cup. Other side it goes on the. Oh, that was the short side. Sheesh! Everything was right. All right. Wouldn't you know? I just undid something that was perfect. Well, if you're doing enough time to become an expert. There we go. So let's grab those shims again. Now two shims are in there. Now I can grab Baron. And the bearing sits there. And it's the bearing is already oiled. So I do not have to worry about it. And now I can run this through. That will seat right here and that is it so this thing is sat and it is very very smooth now i am going to grab a little bit of grease stick one of these little foams in there and this anti-wear grease you can use whatever grease you want. I'm using this one. All right. And uh, that is it for this. So now at this point, I'm gonna grab this little section right here. So it looks like a little castle. And I will place it, let's see, right here. So you wanna line up, see that groove? That groove right there that lines up with the hole so line it up with this hole because there's going to be another pin that will be inserted right in there <clears throat> excuse me let's see and the pin is the silver one so grab the silver pin slide it through just make sure you don't drop it uh, but that pin is now in there. And I need the other foam. Do the same thing. Oh no. There. All right. No excess. It's fine. Pin is set properly. All right, don't worry too much about that pin. And the reason why I say that is the gear is going to hold it in place. So the gear is what actually holds that pin in place. So once you put this gear in here, everything will be fine. And the main thing is to line up the four holes. There. That will be holding it. All right. And now, where are those tiny little screws? Right here. And 
Should be these. Oh, is this it? That's not it. Hmm. Hmm. Are they regular countersunk screws? Just need to confirm the screw type. Which ones those are? Uh, BB fours. I remember seeing them, or I think I remember seeing them. Maybe it was from the previous build that I just did, uh, and I'm probably thinking it was those screws. One here we go, right here. So it's these little black ones. They're not quite button screws, but they're not countersunk screws either. Uh, let's see, can't really see. So it's these guys right here. So I'll need four, and then I'll have four left over. And these are going into metal, therefore I will be using a little bit of thread lock compound just because they're going into metal. Oh, too much. Uh, there's pros and cons to working on top of a towel. Uh, the biggest con is the lint. Uh, the pro is you can just wipe everything off and then just throw it in the wash. And I'm going in a cross pattern. Now, a quick little note about the gears. Use the Tamiya gears. They use, it's a 0.8. Uh, so do not use a 48 pitch. You will destroy the gear. So that's something very important. Do not use 48 pitch because it's a point, it's a, it's a 0 06. 0 06 is what you use. So that's, that's something very important, something to keep in mind. Uh, but there we go. So transmission is assembled. So at this point, I can go ahead and install the motor. Uh, which to be honest is going to be somewhat of a pain because I couldn't put the electronics, but I know this is going to go toward the bottom because this fits right in that little box right in here. So this will eventually go, uh, let's see, we'll go this way, just like this. So I know the motor is going to go in here, which means that I can face the wires up. So what I mean by that is when I install this, I'm gonna install it this way. So the holes I'm gonna do, oh great. Oh, I can use those. All right, perfect. Yeah, not bad, not bad. I wish it was upright a little more, but this will work. Uh, which means I'm gonna get the screws uh, for this, which are actually short, they're six millimeters. So I'm looking for six millimeter button screws. It looks like these are it. Let me go ahead and measure. So I'm gonna have one left over. And that's it. And it's six millimeter. And then it calls for a washer as well. Right here. So that's too many. Three. And it's going into metal, therefore I will be using thread lock. Oh, that was too much on that second. It's all right because it's on the towel. Now, one of the things that you may want to do, to be honest, is just replace these screws for hex screws. I'm gonna leave them though.
but say if I were to remove these screws next time, I would probably replace them. Just go with hex. Now, if you're going to be, let's just say, building this car to race a stock class or, or a spec class where it has to be built per the instructions, everything. First of all, I doubt anybody's going to check. But you never know. And I need this little grub screw for this one. And some thread lock. Ta da! Good stuff. Uh, be careful with these grub screws that are included because they are aluminum, which means uh, you can easily destroy them. And if you have a sheet of paper, you can run a sheet of paper here through the teeth just to help it mesh, or you can just do it by feel. And by ear, you'll feel and hear a little click. I'm not sure if the microphone picked it up, but that's what it should sound. Uh, so never mesh them really, really tight, because if you do, uh, the pinion is going to destroy the spur, because it's metal plastic. Uh, if they were both metal, they would chew each other up, but that's the reason why. So there's always going to be just a little bit of play. And if you actually look at the teeth carefully, they're not a perfect triangle. They're not like this. They're actually like this and I'm exaggerating the shape. So the teeth actually mesh here, and this little gap is left to allow for some movement or give. So they're never gonna mesh like this, they're gonna mesh something like that. And I'm exaggerating, but there's gonna be just a small amount of movement between the gears. And that is very, very important. So this is uh, meshed perfectly. Now I can just continue on to the next bit, uh, which is installing the cover which is in a totally there it is all right that was luckily it's so big is easy to spot uh let to trim this one just a tad uh in order to trim these a file might be easier it's it sure is a lot safer if you're not used to knives or if you don't have nice sharp blades the sharper the better uh, don't use a dull knife ever. The only reason, the only, the only thing you should be using a dull knife for is for sharpening it. All right, here we go. I actually do not like this fit. It was too close to the cover. Oh, it's not hitting. Oh, that is really close. All right. I guess to me it doesn't joke around. And that's what the third screw is for. All right, this one goes through the front, up top. All right, so we'll put it there. Snug is all you need. All right, there's only one screw at the top. There's no screw at the bottom based on what I can see in the image. Uh, no, that's it. Just the top. All right. So, like I said, I'm just going to leave this attached because I'm going to see later on if I can switch the position instead of mounting it over here, if I can mount it right behind the motor. Uh, 
per the instructions, it probably wants me to mount it on the other side of the motor just for weight balancing. That, that's what I believe because the receiver is a lot lighter. So if you put the receiver behind the motor, motors tend to be about 150 grams, roughly. Uh, ESCs with wires, these are probably 80 grams, roughly. Uh, and then, so if you put the ESC on this side with the servo, it'll be close to the weight of the motor and the receiver. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but nothing that can't be fixed with some weights later on, although it's going to make the car heavier and having a heavier car isn't really a good thing. Uh, but we'll see. All right, so we'll hold it here. And so the screws that we need are eight millimeter countersunk screws. So I'm gonna grab these two for now. So let's go ahead and find, here they are. Here. So I'm actually gonna be using these four eventually. So I'll just place them on this other side. And these are going into plastic. Whenever you go into plastic, do not use thread lock. That's very important. It's only when you're going into metal. And thread lock compound is not like glue. Uh, the way it works is it gets hard, similar to glue, with pressure. If it's not under pressure, it doesn't harden like it would. So as you're screwing something, the threads get tighter and tighter against each other. So that puts pressure on the thread lock, which makes it get harder. That's the reason why. Uh, I guess eventually it will get sort of dry and grainy, but that's not how thread lock actually works. It works through pressure. All right, now there's two screws that go over here and these two screws hold. I have no idea what on earth they hold, but these are uh, button screws and they're eight millimeters. And the reason why is if I flip it, there's nothing there yet. So it looks like there's a box or a case that I may need to pull. Actually, oh, wait, nope, nope, that's not it. All right, so I just installed these two, so it's these two, it's that brace. All right, so let's find that brace. Okay, same parts tree as that other bit, it's this one right here. And this one is just to hold the wires neatly. I may not install it. Probably, wait a minute. No, no, I will install it. So this goes here. So, the, so normally this would hold the wires from contacting the shaft that's gonna go here. Uh, so this is an important brace, but now that I have this here, how can I mount the ESC? All right, I'll have to figure this one out later. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to install this and then I'll deal with the, uh, the ESC at another time. Wires, you don't want to cut the wires too short uh, at all. And the reason why is you get an electrical pulse that sort of bounces back and forth. If they're the wrong length or too short, you're going to screw that up. Most of us wouldn't notice the performance difference. So I guess from that perspective, it's not going to matter, uh, but it does make a difference. So the bottom one's lined up and that's really all I need. Uh, and like I said, it's button screws that are needed for this particular bit and they're eight millimeters, which should be, these look like they're eight millimeters. Perfect, all right. Missed. 
absolutely missed. This thing shifted. I was trying to, as I was trying to drive it in. Now, if I were using a Tamiya ESC, it would probably fit fine. I just don't feel like taking the one out of... Oh, no, that one's pretty large. Never mind, I have another vehicle. But uh, I really wanted a, a hobby wing in here, to be honest. So now that it's there, I can sort of play around, mess around with it. Yeah, I might be able to fit this. Oh, there we go. That fits, so now it's just a matter of the sensor wire getting the sensor wire out of the way. Uh, so the ESC would fit here. Uh, because of the ESC, uh, the thing with this is the following. Uh, if I were to place it on this side, the servo is kind of in the way. And by kind of, it is in the way. Uh, so here, I may have to install the switch, the optional switch. So I can send the lead. Elsewhere, but that connects back here, which means I wouldn't be able to without drilling. Uh, so those are my issues. There's a switch that goes in here for the external switch. But if I install this here, I'll have to drill a hole here so I can plug in the switch and then run it elsewhere. Uh, because as of now, I may not need the fan, to be honest. Because this thing doesn't draw that much power. Or I can install a fan in different way because this doesn't fit here either but that may be the best choice if i actually remove the fan and then the switch would be here in the middle that'd be accessible definitely would not be able to install the external but at least this one i'll be able to push so i'll, I'll end up doing that i'll actually re remove the fan so let me go ahead and remove the fan Motor definitely needs a fan. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and then plug. Hey, can you tell I used to run this on carpet? I should have cleaned that. Anyway. So that is good. There we go. All right, so going back to the installation. So this wire will have to go this way. So my receiver will go on the opposite side. Oh, wait, hold on. Does it have to? Now that I did this? Ah, yes. All right, so it has to go on this side. No big deal. We'll go just like this. No fit. Right in here. All right. So let's go ahead and send the wire under. And before I actually expose the tape, this thing will have to go at an angle. All right. Well, I guess no other way just making sure the wire doesn't touch the motor doesn't seem like it's touching the motor this one but the sensor wire might either way i'm not really liking this okay i'm gonna skip it for now 
Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the balls, the, these little pivot balls that I did not install previously. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna set these here. Uh, you can use regular pliers, but I'm gonna use these. Uh, these were pretty inexpensive. I got these, I think AliExpress. Uh, oh, that's to remove, sorry. And let's see, we'll use this. Nope, nope, missed. Totally missed. Not managing to line them up. So, so much for these pliers. Oh, man. Dropped it for good luck. All right. Uh, all right. So, I'm not using these. I'm using some regular ones. I guess they work better for removing things. So, we'll just use some regular pliers. Not so regular. one Let's see. just trying to make sure this thing sat properly yes it did good stuff now the next one There we go. And the last one. That's it. All right. Away. All right. Good stuff. Uh, so this is a G2. This is a Hobbywing uh, XR10 Pro. The pro stock is smaller, so it has a smaller uh, footprint, which is probably what you would want for this, just given the space. So I may have to do that and, and buy that other ESC instead of this one. So let's see. So now mounting, okay, so, ooh. All right, so you definitely need the electronics beforehand, and the reason why is now we're getting to the upper plate, which I removed, which is this one right here, and this is gonna cover everything. Wait, is this the correct one? That's what it shows. Or maybe I'm not. All right, uh, I guess I'm not installing it yet, but this would go. There's only two places this could go. And this definitely looks like a nose because this is the rear. All right, so this would go back here. And this is the nose and this holds the diff. All right, so this is why you need the electronics installed. Because if not, you're gonna have to remove the entire thing. Ah, uh, this is fun. All right, so let me go ahead and just work with everything that goes on here and then we'll worry about that some other time uh, later on. All right, so here I'm gonna need a lot of these little, these little ball studs. 
Uh, so this ball thread will go here, but I also need the nuts that go on the bottom. So that being said, I'm gonna grab this, flip it, and I'm just going to drop the little nuts that go in there. So I'm gonna have a total of six. So one pair, two pair, three pair. And I'll go ahead and just drop them. Just when you drop them in, don't flip it. Uh, so we'll do, so there's, One, and uh, try to put the flat side toward the plastic, just in there. I'm actually thinking it might be a bad idea because I've done this before uh, to put all the nuts in. So I'm just gonna get these ready get them started. So I have six of them. I'm just going to use a little bit of thread lock. that one. So again, flat side toward plastic, just like that. I'll tighten everything at the end once I have all six of them installed. And I wonder why the use of nuts instead of going into the plastic. So one of the things that you can do, for example, in this case, uh, well, here it was fine, but if you want nuts to not land on the side, because sometimes it'll get stuck, uh, just s use a driver. So put the nut on the driver to guide it in. And what I mean by that is, you do this, you put that in the hole, and then you just drop it in, and that's it. So that's all six of them. Now there's these little metal cups. So these little metal cups you're going to need uh, this this side. So let me just right. They're all the same. All right. So this should go. Let's see if I'm holding this this way. These will go in here. And then you're gonna use a, it's just a six millimeter screw. Here they are, right here. Let me put some thread lock compound on them. And these are just gonna screw right in there. So you're gonna have uh, two of those little cups. Let me just make sure, I don't think those are in the right spot. Nope, no they're not. It's this, uh, this one right here that has the hex. So if you look at the picture with the hex, that has a hex. This will go right there. Hex and hex. All 
All right, so now I can put some thread lock. I'm gonna put thread lock on two of them. Right there. This is a hex problem because the angle of plastic being the way they went with the hex. I don't know if it's less expensive. It's probably less expensive to make the other screws compared to hexes. That's the only reason why I think they probably use hexes. And that's what I'm thinking. There we go. All right. So the top, just to confirm, we have uh, three pairs of ball studs, and then we have the two little cups here. These are for the suspension. This is where those little rocker arms are gonna go back and forth uh, for the suspension. Uh, but that's it on these. Then after that, we just need to put those little rocker arms, which we have to find them now. So those should be on the D, D tree. And here's one of them. And here's another. And one of the things that I do like about these is they're one piece compared to the Arma Nero or the Revo series of cars. Uh, those are two pieces. And this is just one. All right, so now I need the bearings. So I'll go ahead and drop the bearing in here. And Stick that in there, and then I'll put the other bearing. That's it. All right, so let's do bearing. Right here, and we'll do the other one right in there. And one of the things that I probably should have done first is I probably should have installed the ball studs there, uh, but I didn't. So now I'm gonna grab these. Now these are going into metal. And it's those uh, those different ones. They're not quite. They're not countersunk, but they're not quite button screws. And camera's not focusing, but it's these. We'll probably have to go to the hobby shop and pick up a different ESC. I don't think this is it. Since I made a mistake somewhere, this allows for too much play up and down. Uh, let me just confirm the screw. Yeah, so it's definitely six millimeter in the bottom. That's what I used. And then top. Those are five millimeter, that's what they are, right? Five millimeter. They are. Let's see, unless I made a mistake, there's a possibility that I made a mistake with this other screw down here. And the reason why I'm saying that is, let's see. All right, this is a six millimeter, that is correct. And it count, uh, yep, it calls for a six millimeter. Maybe I am supposed to have that much play. Oh, all right, some of you caught it. You're right, you're right, you're absolutely right. There's a uh, spacer, a little nylon spacer that I'm supposed to use, uh, which is D1. So let's find those uh, D trees. Uh, there's D and there's the one. And I already have the other one right over here. All right, perfect. That's why there's so much space. So uh, that leads me to the next thing. Do not torque screws all the way down and try to get them down. If something's not fitting quite right, there's something wrong. So go ahead and double check. 
That way you don't screw up your model. Uh, come on. There we go. Ha, snug is all you need. Perfect. And and that's it. Smooth. All right. It's always nice when things start taking shape. Uh, but this is this is it for the. The front plate so now we can move on and well we have to do the post so we'll go ahead and install the post which means that now we have to well, it's probably gonna have to say, uh, let's see post should be in the a i believe this is the a it is it's this little stubby right here a little stubby one all right so that front post and that's going to be held by Where's my eight millimeter? Uh, those are eight millimeters. Counter sunk. Here we go. All right. So I've got these. The, the reason why is I do have those eight millimeters there, but those have thread lock for the rear plate. Those I'd already gotten ready. Uh, this goes here. And it's a counter sunk. So make sure you have that. All right, let's get in that little tab, a little notch there. All right. Just gonna put a body clip here to help me hold it. All right, good stuff. Perfect. So that is finished and should be another bit here, which is for the antenna, which I don't actually need. So let's see, let's go back to the A tree. Nope, that's not A, it's T. So now I need the T tree. Which one is this? This is T. Uh -huh. All right, let's see. So it'll be this one. It's T6. And then T5. Oops, there it goes. All right, and T5. All right, T6 and T5. All right, so let me grab this. And this one, so there's that little, that little knob right there. That faces down. So this will go. This just goes here. Floating? Wait. Uh, I will be looking at a picture. It appears that it goes back here and it's just floating up. So give me a moment. I'm just gonna look ahead in the manual again. All right, so that is for the antenna. So I am not going to install that because I'm not going to be running an antenna with an antenna tube. Uh, I guess I can install this one. Why not? It's small. But then again, why? Th this is just a cover. So I don't actually need this either. Uh, so this, this is, this is the way it works. 
uh, based on what I'm seeing. So this is just a cover. There's going to be a screw to cover up that hole. This is for the antenna. So this will screw, you run the antenna through here, you put the antenna tube in there. That's what this is for. So if your receiver is on the right side, this is going to go on the right side, the plug is going to go on the left. If your receiver is on the left side, this will go on the left, this will go on the right. I don't need them. I'm just going to put them off to the side. But that's what you would do. So it depends on what side the receiver is on. This is forward, so that's forward. If your receiver is on the right, antenna tube right here. If you're going to be running an antenna tube, I am not. Uh, so this is good. I am skipping that part and I am going to the rear of the suspension. I'll just, I'm just going to set that on top and I'm going to grab the rear. So the rear, uh, we have to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, you're going to have the three pairs of ball studs. which I'll go ahead and put some thread lock on them now. All right. And I'm gonna grab the nuts that are right here. So I should have six of them. And remember, it's the flat side, you want toward the plastic. All right, there, so I'll grab the first one. Oh, this one's harder to spin. Let's grab the driver. And I'll actually tighten the whole thing now. Snug is all you need. Uh, might be my next quote, snug is all you need. So nice when things work. Let's see which one's the flat side. So flat side goes towards the plastic. All right, and all the studs are there. So this works, uh, this is the rear. Now I need to use those little cylinders, these little cup looking things right over here. All right. So these, again, will go on this little bit with the hex, right where the hex is printed. Here we go. These 
already have some thread lock on them. Wait, it's not these. Uh, all right, that's fine. There we go, it's the hex ones. Which I did not put. So, so make sure you use the hex for these. All right, here we go. All right, so we've got that little bit and the suspension is going to be the same. So those arms, I'm gonna go back to the trees and find the last two. Here they are. One, two, this broke off quite smoothly, so that's good. And we'll go ahead and drop this in, drop that in, install one of these. Go ahead and install the other. And I'll drop the other bearing. And this one here. And, oh, I need the D1 spacers. Did I put... Alright, so let's do this. Alright, so now the D1 spacers. Should have two more left. There's one. And the, the D1 spacers, they are the thicker ones. So if you accidentally cut them all off the trees, they are the thicker spacers. They're probably about three millimeters. Uh, where's the other tree? There it is. Maybe two. Two or three. All right. So let's go ahead and switch drivers. There we go. Now the other thing I have to do is, I have to install the ball studs here on all of them. And so there are no spacers, so these are just going to go in and I have to do it to this one as well. So it will be fun. It's just, it's only eight of them. So I was just checking how far it was. And snug is all you need. Lightly snug. Keep in mind that if you were to damage one of these parts, one of these, you have to buy the entire tree. One more in the rear will be set. And 
There we go. And almost finished with these. All right, one more. That's it. So now we have the front and we have the rear of the car. So it's it's beginning to take shape. Uh, the next step is gonna be, uh, actually there's some links that I have to make for the steering. So I have to make the links and then I can actually move on. So it'll be the steering first and then I can move on to the differentials. To be honest, I've been eager to do the differentials since the beginning of the build. Uh, this is one of the, uh, with some of the other vehicles, you always do the differentials first. With this one, you do not, which is interesting. I'll try and set to go first because of the way the covers uh, actually fit in here. But uh, we're gonna move on to the steering. And for the steering, uh, we will be needing that uh, tea tree. So it's a tree, that's a T, which I had in my hand, here we go one with the steering bits. So this is the one. And the parts, so we have that, this, and this. Now these two, these are optional servo horns that you can use instead of this one with the servo saver. Use the servo saver, and the only reason why I'm saying this is this is plastic. This is plastic. This is probably going to break first if you're not using a servo saver. Keep in mind, this is metal gears. I'm not worried about the gears breaking. I'll probably break the horns. I've broken horns before. But the thing is that you could break the plastic in the steering because these are not aluminum. So I strongly recommend that you use this. It's something to keep in mind. But uh, this parts tree now as it is, uh, we no longer need this. For the steering, uh, if you look at the manual, it says metal bearing. Uh, I don't see any metal bearings, I see bushings. Uh, but if you do get the bearings, the sizes are right. Wait, no, no they're not. I was, I was obviously joking about the sizes. Uh, but I guess you can order them. You can order them through Tamiya. Or if you have a local hobby shop, they just need the size. So this is about five millimeters. Eight on the outside. And 2.5, so that's about it. And the little guy, so we need four of the previous. This one's six on the outside. Three. And about 2.5. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead and close this. Uh, I'm not sure why there aren't any bearings included. Uh, if you look at the other bags, there are bearings, but I'm not to them yet. So that would be bag C and bag D. Uh, but they appear to be the shaft bearings 
so I'm not going to use them. <clears throat> so we'll work with these, just the bushings. All right. So we have this, these parts right here. It's going to be a bushing on one side later on. If I get bearings, I'm not going to need them. Not for this car. Uh, and then there's usually a bearing on the outside. And before I actually press this one in, let me just confirm. And yes, confirmed. A bearing on each side. So I'm just going to use the driver. And if you have a bearing puller, that's probably what you should be using. And the reason why is you want these to go as straight as possible because you can damage the plastic. That's the reason why. So as straight and even as possible, there we go. And we'll go in smoothly. So if they start catching and not going in, then they're going in crooked. So you want to stop and realign them. So that is one. There goes the other one. Good. All right, good stuff. Right here. And that's it. I'm just using my driver. <clears throat> that's the 5.5 .5 millimeter driver. It's the perfect size. All right. So now we can use these little bushings, and these little bushings will go in through the bottom. So that's what I'm considering the top. That's the bottom. And yeah, the camera doesn't really focus very well on this. But here we go. All the bushings are installed, so all brass bushings. And now... believe these are the 10. That is correct. So these are the 10 millimeter. So we're going to grab these 10 millimeter little set screws here. And these, so if you grab, if you look at this plate, these little tabs, so this is going to be your reference. These go, put these at the bottom. So put those down and then you're going to drive this in. Now it does call for anti-wear grease, which is something that you can use. I don't know why they want anti-wear grease unless there's a chemical reaction between the metals. And the reason why I am saying that, because we're gonna use some of these little bald ends. So I don't know why you would want the grease, unless there's a chemical reaction between two different types of metals, maybe. If we had zinc and aluminum, that would be an issue. And when you're driving it through, you want to make sure that this is not off at some weird angle. You want to make sure this is as straight as possible. And from time to time as you're driving in, just sort of pull it out part of a turn. The reason why is so it cuts to the plastic a lot better. All right, here we go. So like I said, it does call for anti-wear grease. I don't know why. I have some here. I believe that's anti-wear grease. Very cheap, that's it. I'm gonna use thread lock because <clears throat> those things are not supposed to be coming out. Uh, but go ahead and build it per the manual. I'm not, again. So here we go. Perfect. 
grab this one. Snug is all you need once again. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's it for those. Uh, now, I need the eight millimeters. Let's see, these are it right here. Wait, no, I think it needs these little weird ones. Uh, B, B3, yes. So it's it's not the button screws. Do not use these button screws. It's these little ones. So these are the ones we're going to be using. And uh, these will be screwing into plastic, so I will not be using thread lock because they'll be screwing right into those holes. So this has to face down. So these two balls are going to be facing down just like this and notice the orientation so now i'm going to grab this one and this one faces this way so think about it this way the screw is going to be on on brass and this will just sit like this so it'll go right in there into plastic now with these screws, you need a driver that fits. Don't use something like this or else you'll destroy, you'll just strip that inside of the head completely. Uh, like I said, these are, don't have Japanese drivers. I have the closest thing uh, that I have to not strip them and it works, but they are different than regular Phillips screws. So the driver that I'm using, this is a Z, Z, ZWF. Uh, if this thing were to focus. There we go. So that's the driver that I'm using. And this one works fine. Again, not the best choice, but I don't have another choice at this moment. And let's see. Okay, this thing needs to be driven in just a bit more. All right, yep. All right, here we go. As I stab myself with the driver. All right, there we go. Not a big deal, it's just a little piece of skin. All right, that was the finger right there. <clears throat> All right, good stuff. Now the next one. So as I'm driving, I actually have the driver on the palm of my hand. That's why I'm applying pressure. there. there All right, so there's my steering. Doesn't bind. We are good. If I ever replace those bushings, I would replace the screws. So when I take them out, if I put them back in, I'll destroy the heads. Uh, all right, and that is it for the steering. So now turnbuckles. Turnbuckles are fun. I'm not sure what I dislike more, turnbuckles or shocks. One of the two. I haven't really decided which one I dislike the mo more. Uh, let's see. Why couldn't it be these fixed ones? Just give me fixed ones. No, I'm kidding. It's for the steering. Uh, so uh, the parts tree that I'm going to need for this is A. Oh, this is A. All right, A, and it's going to be probably some of these because it's A9. All right, so it's these on this side. All right, so A9. Right here. And I will be building two, so I might as well take the other nines out. 
And the difference between the eight and the nine is the length. Uh, eight is a little shorter than nine. And we're gonna be using this. Now, just because uh, I'm gonna end up using, see now it's circulating, well done, well done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some grease. The only reason why I'm applying grease is so that hopefully helps me drive it into the plastic a lot easier. That's the only reason why, is it sticks to my finger because of the grease. All right, so here we go. this one. Alright. That's about halfway. Five five millimeters. Now I'll drive this one in. supposed to be no yes there we go all right we're supposed to be even all right good stuff uh, all right let's see I, I wish they would give me an overall length I don't see an overall length on the manual does not. So the only reason why I wanted a length is to make sure that the other one is very, very close. Alright, so I'll be back here. So there's two links. So uh, after doing these, I'm gonna say it's probably the shocks. Shocks are what I dislike most. Uh, all right, so let's see, what next? So at this point, I have my steering. And, all right, so one of these links will go here. Pliers will make this easier. which are somewhere. All right, so let me find the post. Are they plastic? I don't think they're plastic. So it's BB-19. So those are the ones that I need, uh, BB-19. I have to find them. So those big ones, if they were here on the table, I would have seen them, uh, but they're not. So they have to be in a bag somewhere. And the question is, which bag? 
so let's see, this is old shock stuff. Bag D, no, it's probably bag C. I mean, it makes sense for them to be in bag C, but you never know. All right, silicone damper oil, hard. What does that mean? No clue. Uh, clear. 1,000. 1,000. Really? Huh. Wait. Light blue. Clear. 900. Clear is 900. So this is 900. Which on this type of suspension, you generally need heavier oil. Uh, if you were using, so for example, 400 is roughly 35, just under 35 weight. So I'll give you an example or a rough idea. No bushings, yay. Oh, sweet, yay. I opened a bag and I did not need. Huh, all right. Oh, wait, no. Got excited for nothing. All right, so we'll set this off to the side. Uh, maybe it's in one of these trees. Uh, I said B. Let's see. So the part is B, B19. <coughs> so I opened bag B. Bad idea. So let's see. I'm going to look at bag D just for fun. Nope. Let's put everything back in bag D. So it should be in bag B. Uh, if, if you see them, just kind of point at them. Let me know where they are. Oh my god. Don't tell me it's these. No, it can't be those. Those don't have the little hex. And those are five. That's B5. All right. <laughs> BB19. Steering post. All right, well, let's look at parts from B. This is D. No idea what this is. All right, so this is B. And that's not it. Definitely not it. All right, uh, I will have to look for them because you can't find them on my bench either. Or maybe you did, but I can't see where you're pointing. Uh, so just give me a moment. Oh, they weren't on the screen. That's why you couldn't point on them right here. All right, so it's these little blue anodized uh, parts right here. So they were in the B bag originally. I had them out here. All right. So th these are the ones that we're using for the steering. So for these, uh, these are going to go straight in the chassis, and I'm going to need the eight millimeter, and they are button screws. So it's these here. So eight millimeter. This is silly. All right, we'll do that. Grab this. All right. So make sure that it keys in there, uh, because if it doesn't, you're going to damage the plastic. Uh, so it should just drop right in place, then tighten. Because if it has not, then it's it's not going to seat at the correct level. 
And it's not just that it's not gonna seat in the correct level, you're gonna cut up the plastic as you're tightening this. And again, I keep repeating this, snug is all you need. Do not over tighten these. You're gonna damage something. Uh, here, more than likely, you're gonna damage the plastic because the plastic is the weaker out of the materials that are being used. Uh, but you could cross thread things as well. There we go. All right. Now, I'll go ahead and just set this here and the steering. Uh, judging by where the servo is, should go this way. I can always correct that later. It's better if I just look at the instructions and the answer is yes. Uh, so the steering will go this way. Just like that. And then this will just turn. Uh, bearings are always much, much nicer, but this is good enough, to be honest. All right. Most of us are probably not gonna notice the difference. If you're bashing, you're not gonna notice the difference. If you're racing, you may start noticing the difference a little. Or if you're used to really nice cars, you'll notice the difference. Uh, but that is it for this. So this is all set. Now what ends up holding the steering is this top plate. This plate will go here and then it'll screw, it'll screw there, uh, which I will be installing in and then later on I'll, ins I'll install the electronics. Uh, but that is all for that. So now I can move on to the highly anticipated part, which is the differentials. So here we go. Uh, for the differentials, we have two cases. These cases are identical. So uh, the once you assemble one, you assemble the other, but you're going to be using different oils for them. Uh, now, uh, Tamiya wants you to use the damper oil, which is this, which is a 900 according to this. Now I'm gonna assume that's CST, and 900 CST, uh, that's probably around 45 weight, if. No, it's gotta be heavier. It's, it's gonna be in the 50s, maybe even 60, uh, if I had to take a guess. Well, here, let's see. I have some 60. This is it, so it's more than 60. But we'll go ahead and use this. So I'll use that for one of the differentials. I'm not gonna use it for both, and the reason why is the following. If you have a light differential in the front, it's gonna be stable when taking turns, so you're going slow. Uh, if you're going slow, it's going to be stable, slow. Once you start going fast, it's not going to be stable anymore. But if you have a lighter in the front, you're gonna steer a lot better. Versus if you have heavier in the front, it's gonna start pushing, but it's gonna be a lot more stable when you're on power if it's heavy, which is why I'm just gonna go ahead and use one million. Uh, on regular touring cars, to be honest, we generally use a spool. So it's, we don't even have a differential in the front, it's, it's locked. Uh, and they're far more stable in the front. And then the rear, you go light, uh, this is, eh, 800 should be fine, 900, 900 should be fine. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So I'm going to build one according to the manual, and then I'm going to build one with one million. The one that's one million is going to go in the front. There's no way you can mix them. When you turn them, you can feel the difference between the two. Uh, but all right, here we go. So I'm going to need this as well for the O-rings. What O-rings? Oh, here we go. You need to open these little suckers. All right. Well, let's move some of these screws off to the side because we're now working on something else. And every single Tamiya kit that I've ever built, I always have a bunch of screws left over and it's they, they just come with a kit. It's not something, it's not a mistake. It's not like X-ray where every screw is accounted for precisely but the uh, X-ray does offer a last resort bag, which has, you know, some spares just in case you lost one. Uh, 
All right, here we go. So I've got all the shims, everything. Uh, first thing I will do, oh, wait, no, I'm not using this one, I'm using this one. I'm gonna lubricate the O-rings. And I do like using this green slime. You can use grease, that's fine too. Uh, but I do like this green slime a lot, uh, especially for shocks. So this works very well for shocks. All right, now that I have that, uh, let's see, O-ring should go first. Not in mind. You know what? Forget about that. I'm not going to use that part first. There's a reason why. Well, first I'm going to put some slime on these. The reason why I'm putting slime on these is because these are going to be in contact with the O-rings. And I've got a ton on my hands right now. to wipe it off. Alright, so let's open up the bag with the little shaft ends. Uh, let's see, it's going to be these right in here. All right. Put some green slime on these as well. All right. <clears throat> uh, bearings, I'm going to go ahead and oil them. And now I can start doing the build. So, I feel like I'm going to be needing bearings. There's only two of those. About four shafts. Maybe it uses a different one. Let's see, I've got these right over here. Uh, I'll figure this out in a bit. All right. So, the short one. Yeah, they all should be using bearings. So my short bearings? Hmm. Well, I'll build one differential and then I'll worry about the other one afterwards. So let's go ahead and do this. So we'll take one of these bearings, that bearing will go in there, and then we'll take this bearing. So we're doing a short and a long. So long and a short. And then you drop it for good luck, of course. Just make sure you don't drop it on a pile of screws. And now I can grab a case. All right, so the long case, this one is going to take the long shaft. So that will go in there. And no, something is wrong. Let's see, BB-13, BB-13 metal bearing that is fascinating because nothing actually goes inside. Something. Yeah, take a moment and actually think about what's going on. This 
doesn't make sense to me. The bearing should fit inside, but these do not fit inside. No, this makes no sense. I'm gonna take these off. Uh, all right. So if you look at the picture, BB-13, BB-13 should be a metal bearing. Uh, metal bearing, so here's the shaft, shaft would go in, uh, but the metal bearing does not go in the case. And because it does not go in the case, there's not enough room to actually put the pin and everything in there. Uh, so that is the issue. So now I have to see what BB-13 is, uh, because in the bag, so BC3, there's four. Here, there should be four, I don't see four. Uh, so again, it's probably something similar to where I just need to look. It's gonna be those bushings. It's the bushings. Just don't look for bearings, it's the bushings. Uh, right, good job there. All right, um, so here we go. So the long one will go in. Oh, goodness, why would you do that to me? Stupid. All right, here we go. All right, so the O-ring goes here. Now I can go ahead and drop a shim, so I'll grab a shim. Shim goes right there. And after the shim, there's there's two shims on the same side. Alright, so there's two shims, one of them's thicker than the other. And then a pin. All right, might or might not be necessary to use that shin. Oh no, grease, forgot about that. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna see what my space, I don't think I'm gonna need the other shin. No, this fits just right. All right. Go ahead and grab this pin. Now, if you notice, there was a cutout on the shaft. That cutout is to make it easier for you for one to slide that pin. Just allows for space to do this. And that's it. So that, there we go. Camera's again, not focusing very well. <coughs> so at this point I can go ahead and drop uh, a gear in and uh, just to make sure it should be, should be the same size gears. So here we go. It should be these. Go ahead and grab it. So at this point, what I'm trying to do is uh, spin the gear so that it seats properly. And I'm gonna succeed because the pin moved. Pin shifted a little. Let me remove this. All right, here we go. Perfect. All right, here we go. Huh. Am 
might need the other shim though. Alright. I think I'm gonna need the other shim, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo it. I'll give you an example. These are the differential bags. Why do I need the antenna tube cover with my differential bags? No idea, no clue. All right, so I'm gonna grab the, one of these other shims. So these are the thicker shims. I'll keep the thicker shim over here. So I will go ahead and undo this. And the reason why is uh, there is too much play. So we'll go ahead and push that pin. There we go, we'll grab this one. And if you're wondering why I did not put the grease on this one, it's because it's not in contact with the actual O-ring. That's the reason why. So I'm not worried about it. Actually, just be using the point three, mm -hmm. which means I'm going to have to actually grease it up. All right, so that's the thin one. This is the thicker one. Let me go ahead and grab some of this. All right, there we go. Right in there. Let's see. Uh, okay. Too far. There. All right, that's a lot better. All right, so that is a lot better. So I used the 0 0.3 shim, uh, only the 0 0.3 shim. So now I'll grab the gear. I'll drop the gear in. Ha, ah, great. All right, so that works. Those are thin shims, thicker shims, uh, and that is it. Now we have these big shims that we may or may not need once we use these bearings. So these bearings will go out here. That's where these bearings go. Uh, pretty straightforward on those bearings. You may or may not need shims. Uh, so I'll sort of wait on these. I'll have to seat it here and then see how many shims I need uh, before I do that. Uh, but at this point, I can go ahead and assemble the cross. So we'll do this. Uh, for these, all of these little gears, they all face each other. So they will all simply go this way. And this is it. Now, 
before installing this in here, uh, I would recommend that you put some oil in there. So we'll go ahead and put some oil. So I'm building the, what will be the rear differential. And now I can go ahead and grab this and I'll go ahead and drop this in run there and then as you just lightly press it in the gears will sort of open up and they'll go into place now you can go ahead and put more oil but always remember to leave probably about a millimeter of space so don't fill it all the way to way to the top and the reason why is that there's another gear that's going to go in there that's going to need space inside of the case that's the reason why. All right, and that should, should be fine. Some more here on the edge. All right, good stuff. Uh, and so that is it. So I can go ahead and stand that one up. And now I'm going to work on this half. So this is the other half for this one. You're going to use that short shaft. So let's go ahead and grab a bushing. Bushing will go in here. And now I can go ahead and grab this. So that will go there. And we'll have this. All right. And now, uh, so. Given that with the other one, this thicker shim worked, I'm going to try the same shim. And I am trying to use up whatever's in the tube. I mean, I do have more. I've got this over here. It's a lot easier to work with something like that. But here we go. This one I could use both. All right, so on this other half, I am using both. There we go. So now I can grab a gear. Gear will go on top, rotate, clicks in, and uh, that is it. So this one, oh, perfect. Just like the other one. So now I can go ahead and grab the gasket. Now the gasket, this, I'll go ahead and put on this side just because it has the tabs and the tabs will hold it in. And there's something wrong. Should fit here. Oh, well, I have to stretch it. Interesting. All right, there we go. So stretch it lightly. Don't overdo it. And the reason why is it is paper, so it can break. And then you need another one. As soon as this thing breaks, you're just going to need another one. There's nothing you, you will be able to do. Uh, but one of the things I do want is I want to get the screws ready. So the screws should be somewhere. <laughs> great. Uh, great. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, all right. Have to be in this bag.
All right, so here are the Rs. Uh, let's see, these are one, look like 1.5s. Uh, 1.5. Now you do not need uh, thread lock because they're going into plastic, but you're going to have to be careful when you're threading them that you do not over thread or you don't thread too much because then you can ruin the entire thing. And once you ruin the threads, you're going to need a new case. So here we go. We have one. Do you have an electric screwdriver? I'm just choosing not to use it. I'm going to go across from that one. And uh, when I was not holding this case straight, I was trying to spin it and turn it so that the oil wouldn't fall out. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So try to keep this pointing up all the time. That is going to be important to do. Let's see. All right, so one more screw, and then after that, I'll drive them close, and then after that, I'll snug them up. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Big mistake. Slight mistake. Not a big deal. Good thing I didn't tighten them fully. And the reason why is, as I was tightening, I was checking, then I realized, wait, there's no holes for the gear. Oh no, I'm supposed to put the gear. So make sure you put the gear on first. So the gear is definitely going to go here. So make sure that ring gear is installed. So like I said, uh, builds, they're generally pretty smooth, except for the little mistakes. It's these little mistakes that will really sort of add up, make it longer. Not a big deal. Start driving this in. The gear. Wait, no, 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 no. I was right. Okay, this is the second time. I need to follow my instinct. That gear goes on the other side. I was doing this correctly. You know what? I think I'm going to use that electric screwdriver. Now, do not over torque things with the electric screwdriver. If you have one with a nice little clutch, uh, that's the way to go. This was just an inexpensive one that. I bought, I don't remember how much. But point is, this was inexpensive, which is why I have it. So electric screwdrivers will save you some time. I still prefer tightening things by hand. But just for video purposes, this will be faster. them off by hand. All right, that's it. So just check, make sure everything operates smoothly and everything does. Uh, nothing binds, everything's good. All right, so the gear actually goes on the opposite side, right over here, so I'll take that ring gear and the teeth are going to be facing toward the center. So the teeth are gonna be going this way and uh, we're gonna need four more of those screws those are going to go, those will go back here.
So I'm purposely holding it light so once it reaches the end, it just spins in my hand. Now I can tighten them by hand. There we go. Da -da -da. That's one di uh, differential. So now at this point, uh, I will install the bearings first. And then once I install the bearings, I'm gonna seat it. And <laughs> that's a lot of play. All right, so I'm definitely gonna need some shims. Uh, all right, so, so let's go ahead and put one on this side. Want to double check and then two on the other. That's what it calls for. And let's see how it reacts now. Oh, come on. There we go. And even then, all right, so use all the shims that it says in the manual. Uh, definitely want to use them all. But I am going to build the front differential. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we know it's the bushings, that will make things a lot faster. So we'll go ahead and just stick the bushings in. Uh, we will do that. Mm -hmm. Long shaft. So long shaft will go in here already has some slime. This already has some slime that will go in there. And I will do a thick shim. Oh, wait, I didn't slime with thick shims. Oh, too much. That's fine though, it'll be all right. Um, Ready. I'll drop right in here. And go ahead and grab the short shaft. Do that. And we'll place that one there. Now I can wipe my hands. All right. I'm going to try to use all the shims. The other one was fine without one, but we'll try using them all, just like the manual says here. All right, we've got that. There we go. So the second differential is going a lot faster, a lot smoother. And this one, one of the thin shims. So given that I did not put a shim on the other one on purpose, I will have a spare shim. Right, there we go. I'll go ahead and put the little cross together. There's the cross. Why? 
do I have that bushing? I have no idea. I hope it's not important. Did I Oh, don't tell me I missed a bushing here. The thing is, no, no, because I clipped them in. So I have no idea, no idea. All right, so I'll put these here, that there, and these bearings here, perfect. So this being said, now I can go ahead and put the oil. Like I said, I am gonna go one million in the front, which is not what the manual calls for. This stuff is always a hard to squeeze because it's the bottle's so damn thick. Uh, the oil is too. I mean, that's how thick that is. So I've put in those four tabs because I want oil there. Now I'm gonna put the cross and I'm gonna go in here. Something that I would recommend you do is just let it sit for a while if you're not used to using this oil. And the reason why is it's very, very thick, but eventually it'll even out and level out. That's the reason why, because we still have some gaps. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, that's how thick the oil is. I'm not sure if you can see. see that's how thick this thing is. should be enough. All right, good stuff. So at this point, I do not want to work with this differential uh, for now. And the reason why is I want that oil to set, just to settle. Uh, and then once it does, I will. So at this point, I'll go ahead and grab this. Just set the gasket. I'll place it there and I'll just get the screws ready. <clears throat> All right, that works. 
And so at this point I can start working on the upper arms. So I already have two of these arms open. I'm gonna cut out the other two. I was about to say four, there's only two more left because those are two. So at that point, let's see. So here is They're all the same, so it doesn't matter which is which. <clears throat> now, when you're left with this amount of parts, uh, just remember that these are uh, D. So you can just cut them all and just get rid of the spurs. I'm going to leave them on just for fun. Uh, that's something you can do. Now, something else that you should have is you should have those little balls that go in there. And they don't. Not in this bag. Don't see them. Let's see if they're in bag D. Nope. There they are. Fun stuff. All right. <clears throat> so I'll just put those parts there. Uh, they're in here. So you need bag D. So even though we have not finished with bag C, you need bag D. Should be four of them. These are shock shafts. Oh, great. Uh, right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and install these first. That's the first thing to do. We'll go ahead and place one in here. Now you have to be careful and use regular pliers to put these in because if you apply too much pressure you could damage the pivot ball. So that's something to keep in mind. So all four of these are now ready. Now we're going to look for the links, and now we're going to use the eights, which are the ones that we had left. Remember, we took the nines, so now we're going to use the eights. And we should have 12 millimeter set screws. Somewhere in a bag. That is not here. No. There they are. Right, so you're going to look for this bag. This bag was in bag D, and they're right in there. So, just to confirm, 12 millimeter, before I open the bag, those are 10. I 
Maybe it's loose. It says 12. The only other bag that I have that screws is this one. Oh, there we are. Alright, so it's gonna be the larger bag. That's a 12. Alright, so they're in this bag. So bag D, grab the larger bag. Which means that now I'm gonna have a ton of screws on the bench. So again, if you build kits, other brands, keep mentioning Techno, X-Ray, Team Associated, every bag's gonna have usually all the screws that you're gonna need. Team Associated, sometimes you have to look for one thing in a different bag, but usually they're all in the bag. All right, here they are, it's a 12 millimeter. And I will put some grease on this. Do not need to, oh no, to put grease on them. It just makes it easier to go into the plastic. And these will be going into plastic. All right. So be there we go. Use this one. Six. All right, there we go. So there's one link. And here goes the next link. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to start them so they're even. So like this, the holes are facing the same way. I'm trying to start it that way. That way they match up at the end. Go back a little. There we go. All right, there we go. So now that I have the two links, I am set. Uh, the differential. Well, I'll show you. So see how the differential fluid looks. I'm actually, gonna take my finger, move some of the oil over here. See, that's how thick it is. Uh. There are thicker oils too. This is one million. They do make a two million. Uh, if you get uh, Traxxas makes a 20 million that is used in the uh, X-Max. So that's even thicker. It's almost like putty. Uh, all right. So actually, I think that's enough for me to work with this. All right, so I'll go ahead and just So all I'm doing is I'm just cleaning the oil from the face because that's where the gasket needs to seat. 
and that this surface needs to be clean. All right, so now this will key in. And this oil is so thick, you don't want to close the case too fast. You want to go slow because you want to give the oil time to sort of move into little gaps in between the gears once you close it. A spool would have been nice. And my goal is just to get them started for now. Now really quick, if I, I know it's really thick, but if you leave this case on its side, all of that oil, when you leave, you leave for a few minutes, once you come back, all that oil is gonna be on the bench. Finish them off by hand. And that's it. So now I'll grab the gear again. So when you place the gear, there's a little notch. So just sort of spin it. Well. and you'll get in the right place. There we go. And this one is pretty thick. All right, so just uh, per the manual, we'll do the same thing. Uh, now there's two shims on one side and then one shim on the other. Let's see. So we have one and one. And the two shims go on the non-geared side. So we'll put this here and this here. Oops. Oh, that could have been bad. That was actually, that's a pretty nice fit. So nicer than the rear. The rear could actually use another shim. And the gears should be on the, let's see. So if we're looking at it, which side am I looking at? I'm looking at this side. So if I'm looking at this side, it should be on the right side. 
Uh, so on the rear, it should be on the right side. So if you look at the picture here for the diff, see, gears on the right side. Uh, on the front, which is this, the gear should be on the left side. So make sure these are just opposite of each other. If you make a mistake and flip these, uh, you're just going to have to reverse the rotation on the motor. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. And if you have them facing the same direction, they're both either going to go inward or outward, which means the car's not really moving. Uh, it's going to move depending on, I guess, which one has more traction. That would be it. Uh, all right, now the rear, I can go ahead and install the rear. I cannot do the front though until I decide what to do with the ESC. Uh, so I will go ahead and install that rear cover. And the reason why is it's not a big deal. This is where the battery goes. If you have foam that you want to place, this is the time to actually put the foam. Uh, so keep that in mind. So if you do have foam right here, uh, this is the time to install it. Because once you put this cover, this cover is sort of going to be on the way. I mean, it's still possible. You can still do it. Uh, oh, whoops, shaft. Forget on the shafts. Uh, so I'm actually getting ahead of myself. All right, so we have these two. Uh, they look the same. All right, so I'm gonna grab one of these and there should be bearings. I don't remember if I put oil on them. All right, now there's oil. So that's an important step. Uh, now that we have oil on the bearings, I'm gonna drop one bearing on and it stops right there. The shim or uh, bushing, I apologize, brass bushing, that'll go. And then the other bearing will sit right here. And uh, there's a bunch of shims right here, but I don't see them fitting. But it calls for three. Oh no, that's to fine tune the gear mesh according to this. Uh, but the thing is, they don't fit. This thing barely fits the way it is. Uh, all right. I don't think I'm going to be using these. I guess I could use... Uh, well, sure, let's see. Wait, is this the right pin? No, that is the right pin. No, no, there's... There's no way I can fit a shim here. This thing barely fits the way it is. No. I don't think there's a difference in length, but just in case, no, it's the same thing. So this will be a tight fit, or at least on mine, it'll be a tight fit. Very tight. Very, very tight fit. So definitely will not be using these shims. The question now is... All right. So I am going to have to use some pressure here to get this pin inserted. Correct pin. There is absolutely no way. Oh, 
I can't even hold this. All right, uh, I have to figure out how to do this. Always, oh, there we go. Yeah, this thing has to go in almost perfectly flat. So I may have to shave down that bushing just to create more space. All right, well, uh, let's see if I can manage. That's because I've been doing it wrong. This is, this is A14, this is plastic. There's only one letter, so if it's one letter, it's plastic. All right, so this will go in here. All right, so it's uh, it's A14, this should be plastic. So this is the A tree, 14, yes, yes, right here. All right. That makes more sense. Yeah, there was no way that was going to fit. All right. So now I need shims. All right, so I will be using the shims. I need more shims. Uh, that's a total of three shims. You're gonna need three, maybe four. So three, we'll go with three shims. That will be fine. And now the gear that we want is gonna be this, this thick one. Perfect. Oh, good. All right. And there it is. So that's the way it fits. Uh, you're gonna have this larger one. Uh, you don't use the larger one. The larger one, you can tell because it's flat. Uh, the one that you need is that small, thick one that has that little end. Uh, that's the one that you're going to need. So let's see, bearings, yeah, this going smooth. Uh, so no, you, you will only need three shims, maybe even two. This is fine with three, but maybe even two shims would be enough. Uh, all right, now the one that we're building first is the front one. Great, it's the front one, that's the one I don't wanna build. Oh well. Uh, so now I'm gonna grease these up. So I'm gonna grease the ends of these little dog bones. Let's do the other side as well. And I feel like there should be pieces of foam that go in here, but there aren't. The reason why I like the little pieces of foam is uh, it makes things run a little smoother. There's one here, just not on this side. Maybe that's the reason why. Once the other case goes on top, it should seat properly. Right. No way for me to spin it. Oh. All right, so that's, that's good. Uh, I mean, the motor's installed, so I can't really spin smoothly because it cards because of the motor. But uh, that works. The only issue that I have, or that I'm going to have, is the electronics. So I'm going to figure that out. So I'll actually leave this off to the side, and I will work on the rear. So the rear, here is this. Where are the other bearings? All right, here they are. All right, so let's go back to the A tree. That was A16. Here we go. And we will be doing the same thing. So we'll drop a bearing. No. 
that wasn't A16. What did I just, no, that was A16, I cut it right off. Wait, no, it wasn't A16 that I needed. A14, all right, so there's an A16 that I will place right there. Uh, A14, there's only one per tree. A14, no, there's two. Okay. Here we go, so A14 goes in there. Then we'll put this right here. Shim it up. Good. All right, so second one's definitely going a lot smoother. And we need the gear, matching gear. And then it should click. Yeah, yes. So two shims is all you need. It's really all you need, just the two. All right, now we need the shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and crease up the shaft. Just the dog bone ends. All right, good stuff. This will go in here. I don't like this. This thing's sticking out. Did I use the wrong shaft? Must have. This is probably the rear. Let me check the shafts. I'm wondering if I made a mistake. No, they're both the same. All right, I will be removing that foam. All right, so there's a little foam, a little red foam that I installed over here previously. I'm actually removing that. And this, I'll actually install over here, back here. That's where this one should go. And that'll keep the tension there. Perfect. All right, that little fit here. And the reason why is the shaft was falling out. Uh, so here, this will no longer fall out. I can set this down. All right. There we go. I would do that. Yeah, so don't do that. I'm just trying to make sure this thing is seating properly. It seats at an angle. That is a horrible angle. Let me show you. See the, uh, I can't really see. Well, somewhat, you can see the shadow. Uh, the shaft goes this way. Well, I guess the, 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 the cup, the cup is aiming this way with the pinion for the differential, and then this is flat, so there's a huge angle there. Oh well, and that's the way it was designed, so that it clears the battery. Uh, so whenever you have things at an angle like that, it just, things tend to wear out faster. All right, so that means now this side, I can actually seat everything, so I need uh, eight millimeters here and then 10 millimeters for everything else. 
So eight millimeters are right here. So I'm not driving it all the way in, I'm just getting it close. Now I'm gonna drive this one in. All right, so now I can grab the 10 millimeters. Should be all of these. All right, how many do I need? Six? I think I need six. All right. Let's see, one, two, three pairs. That is six. One, no. So the first pair goes just in front of the ball studs and I'm just getting them started. The next pair should be between the ball studs. So, all right. Should be some of these pockets. I'll put the ones in the pockets and then these over here right in front. There we go. So now I'm going to drive them all the way in. Go. All right. So I'm gonna grab one of these shafts. Well, the differential is gonna enact, so I'll grab two. Perfect. So the only thing that I was doing is I was checking, making sure nothing was binding. So if I can turn it easily, then nothing is binding. Uh, that's the way that works. So here. Again, I have this dilemma. Maybe I should just uh, place this ESC in here and call it call it a day. Uh, now that I have the steering, I'll actually know how much clearance I have. So let's see if this ESC is going to work. If not, 
Oh, oh wait. No, that doesn't. It's not. It's not seating. All right, so it's not going to work that way because it's not seating. There we go. All right, so would work, maybe? Yes. No, no, it's not. We'll hit the steering. I'm just making sure this won't hit the steering and it looks like this is my only option. I need to make sure I tie the sensor wire in a way that it doesn't hit the shaft. So right now my issue is potentially going to be that sensor wire uh, if I seat it. So let me try to figure this out. All right, so here's the car. So I mounted the ESC, but I had to, let me hold this. Uh, I had to make a hole, so I tried to Make a little hole there. Well, I didn't try. I succeeded in making a hole. So I made a hole, so now I'm going to run the external switch with uh, this XR10 Pro G2. Uh, the ESC, uh, if you want a Hobby Wing ESC, I want to run a Hobby Wing ESC. The one I would recommend just because of the footprint would actually be the Pro Stock. Pro Stock is a much smaller footprint. That's the one I would go with. Um <clears throat> But this one here, there's no way I'm going to access that switch, especially after I put the cover on. So this is another way to go. Uh, so as you can see, my Futaba receiver does fit. It barely fits. And the steering does clear, and that was a concern uh, for me. And so this is really close, but there's still space for the sensor wire to be fine. So I don't have to worry about the sensor wire. Uh, breaking or doing anything. Uh, my battery leads, I will more than likely have to extend these wires, so I'll be replacing these uh, at some point. <clears throat> so we'll see. But anyway, for now, uh, this this works. So here we go. Uh, now, uh, the differential was already on there. Uh, the part that I sort of skipped is uh, this here. So the shaft, uh, just slide that shaft in this will go in here and there's sort of a little cradle so this will fit right on that cradle and i have to turn this a little that's it just like that and then once you have it one of the things that you can do is uh well i didn't put the top cover but just spin it and make sure everything's spinning the correct way so if this is spun forward this has to spin forward and it is remember the gears have to be on opposite sides uh, and now i can put this cover on this cover will go here and once i put the cover on that'll align that shaft in the middle uh, and the steering's not really going to be it's not really going to let you see but it's it's at an angle just like the rear so it angles up and then over uh, the important thing is that the wires don't come into contact with that, which uh, they're out of the way, so everything is uh, good to go. So now I just have to install this. Oh, there it goes. Install it. And I will need, I believe it's six of these. Let's see, 10 millimeter. That is correct. All right, so I'll grab these. And I'll have... Now these are actually gonna go into metal, so I'll put some thread lock on there. These are the rear ones. The rear ones are gonna go into metal because that's the steering assembly. So this will hold your steering.
and I'm just getting them close. I'm not fully tightening them yet. All right, so. so drop that one in there. So these two screws, they go right behind those, these, uh, these little uh, balls right back here. There's these other holes near these, oh, sorry, right up here by the suspension. So these will go by the suspension. Over here, you're actually gonna have eight millimeter screws. So those are gonna be shorter. So you're gonna have eight millimeters here and then eight millimeter screws over here. And these are the eights. Drop one in. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I think I was looking at the wrong, wrong one. Let me just double check. Oh, nope. Uh, I was looking at the wrong one. <clears throat> so these are eights, those are tens, so I have to swap these out. It's a good thing I didn't tighten them fully. So, no big deal. Tighten the front for now. And by tightening them fully, I mean I'm going to get them really close. All right, so let's go ahead and take these out. I'm going to swap them for these. So now I need thread lock on these. So it's 8 millimeters and then 10, 10, 10.
right. There we go. Right there. Perfect. Alright, so this is what it looks like. It's, it's, it's pretty nice so far, I would say. Alright, here we go. So I'll get that switch out of the way for now. I'm not sure where I'm going to install it until I finish. Uh, might install it here off to the side, or maybe back here. So we'll see. Uh, I'll worry about that at another time. So right now, that's not my main concern. So now I have the links as well as the arms. So we will begin with the front and I need to install these arms. So these arms, uh, these will just go straight on these pivot balls. So I'm gonna take this five millimeter driver because it's the right size, place it on top, try not to screw anything up. And then I'm just gonna press down. And the reason why I'm using this is it's it's a nice size, that's why. You can use something that's flat, it doesn't matter because it's not gonna go down. Uh, so I could use the butt of the screwdriver if I wanted to. Uh, so I could place this here, for example. And I could do that. Just make sure you get your fingers out of the way. You don't wanna accidentally pinch them. Uh, I cannot imagine it would be pleasant. Well, that's the reason why. But now that I have these, I can grab these links and these links, they will go to, to the pivot ball. So if you look at the front, it'll go to this pivot right in here. So for this, I will be needing pliers. And then uh, here, let's see. So let me just make sure. It's actually the front one. So we'll go here in the front. I should use pliers. I should make things a lot easier. No. Just like that. And right here. Uh, let's see, where can I grab? Probably back here. Oops, nope. That went ahead and rotated. And this isn't really gonna work here. I don't think, oh, yes it did. All right, so what I did is I grabbed here and there and that went ahead and it worked. So this will work like this, so the, the damper will attach here and there, and this is how the suspension works, right here. Uh, this is a, a design that is copied from Formula One. Formula One at one point used this type of design. Uh, I mean, I'm saying they copied it from Formula One. I'm not sure if other cars other than Formula One ever used it before Formula One. Uh, but the the reason for the design is saving space. It's just easy to put something that is compact. It's not because it's the best suspension in the world. It's not. Uh, it's just because it saves space. So it's the best suspension for the space and the weight. That's the reason why. Can you get better suspension? Yes, but you would be sacrificing uh, any, you would be sacrificing weight advantage, meaning you'd be heavier. Uh, and space. There we go. All right. Looks pretty good. And now uh, we can go ahead and install the rear. Now the rears, 
I have to make the little links as well. Now the links, let's see, A13. A13, yay, they're already made, perfect. I like that. So glad these are already made. All right, A13. Right, so these are going to be the rears, so you just look for A and then number 13, and we'll go ahead and install the arms, and I just have to press them just like I did the others. So again, I can use the butt, oh. I tried giving it a little hit, but no. Here we go. And the link that we will be using will be the outer link. So it's this link right over here. Now, the balls on the inside, if you're wondering what those are for, chances are they're for a sway bar. Uh, because Tamiya sometimes does that. The M07, the Mini M07, I believe it's the M07. Uh, the manual calls for those to be installed, but they're not used unless you get a sway bar. Maybe it's the M08. I don't remember. I have them both. I could check. Let's see. This one, I think I'm going to approach from the bottom. Uh, just a quick little note. If you install these links before the top arm, it might be easier. It will be easier. Because then you have a better place to grip this. So do that. Although this one didn't, wasn't that hard to get on. I wonder if I can do it without pliers, just for kicks. I probably could, I don't want to. This thing moves too much. Part of it has to do because of the angle that I'm holding it for the camera. Some of you are probably thinking, yeah, they're horrible angles, just build the car. Eh, you're probably right. All right. Let's do this, and we will do that, and we will do not that again. Come on. Ta-da! All right, rear arms. Oh boy. All right, you guys see it. I screwed up. You're right. I did. Totally did. Uh, there's two things I can do. One, I can remove the link, or two, I could pop that little sucker off and then flip this. Uh, but because I don't want to mess with a uh, screw for drivers, a fine screw for drivers that I don't have the correct drivers for. I'm just going to do it this way. There we go. If you want to pop this one by hand, install the bottom one first. And there we go. Suspension everything works, so the damper would go here to there. Uh, awesome possum. There we go. All right, so now I can work on the hubs. So the hubs will be on these trees, it's the D trees. So I'll go ahead and remove, I'll just remove all four. Uh, should I remove everything? I'll put these up here. All right. Perfect. Should be bearing somewhere. Here we go. Other bag. Glad these bearings are not bushings. All right. So there's a few things to do. Here they are. All right. So we have 
these. So we have four because we're building, we're gonna end up building four in total. Uh, so we'll build the fronts, then we'll build the rears. That's a total of four. So here we go. So it'll be, you'll have a, should be a bearing in front. Uh, I'll see in the manual, but we'll use that one. And that's it. So this would go here. And to me, as the bearing generally sticks out. Now in the manual, it's only calling for the inner one. Don't worry about it. Uh, the outer one, eventually you're gonna put a, uh, probably a shim more than likely, and then a pin, then the hex will go in, hold everything, and then the wheel will go on. So that's probably a step that's going to be used later. Uh, but for now, uh, I'm just going to build them this way. So I'll put the bearing. And you actually do not need to put the bearing. You could put the bearing here and then just drive it in and push in with this. Uh, that's one way you can do it. So I'll show you. So install the bearing. I didn't put oil. Let's put some oil. All right, one bearing on the inside. That's one of the nice things about these little tubes. All right, don't forget the oil. All right, so that one's there, bearing, bearing, good. All right, so there's the bearing. And just do that. That's it. All right, so now we need to open up this bag. So this is the bag that has the set screws that will go uh, in the front arms. So, if we look for them quickly, there they are, one, two. So these guys are right here. And these are going to be for your steering. Now, why this instead of a regular ball? I, I have no idea. I have no clue. Now, there's probably a reason. Whatever that reason is, I have no idea. But I'm going to be driving this in. And I'm going to drive it until it's flush. Now let's see, this is going to be a mirror image, so I should go this way. Good stuff. And there's already one that is open. Right there. And we're going to grab these. Snug is all you need, just lightly snug. And I'll grab this one and I'll do the same thing. So you're just you're just grabbing these ball ends. Alright, here we go. That is it. So those two are now finished. Now you need to look for these little aluminum hats. So these little bushings here, 
It'll look like a little top hat. All right, we'll grab those. Uh, there we go. So we'll put these four over here and we'll have those there. And those little top hats will go right, so right in this pivot ball, you're gonna slide, slide them in. So you'll have one on top, you will have one on bottom. And it might be better to just do one at a time. But then this will go there and the ball points down on the steering. So this will be screwed there. Uh, so that being said, given that the top one's the one that is probably going to fall off, I'll hold that one and then I will grab the screws. So the screws that you need are 12 millimeter. Should be these. All right, so that's that's a 12. And we need a total of eight. So there's four, that's enough for one end. Well, I'll worry about the rest later. As I keep sorting them. All right, here we go. So this will go into plastic, so I'm not worried. As I drop this out. All right. So I need to set this down. It'll just make it easier. And that will go in here. Now this step is a place where you want to be careful. You want to make sure that the screw, one, you drive it in slowly at first to start it. And the reason why is that it goes straight. And that's step number two, make sure it's straight. All right, snug is all you need. Now, before I install the bottom one, I'm gonna grab one of these shafts. These shafts are gonna go in there. Now you can grease them, and according to the manual, you should grease them. So just grease the ends. This will help prevent wear. Now the interesting thing is, it'll also catch dust, but as long as you maintain them frequently, and properly, you'll be fine. Wait, do I need these? All right, it's, it's not telling me to install the foams. Oh, yes it is. It is telling me to install the foams. To install the foam on this end. Yay for foams. Let me remove this, it'll be easier. I actually do like these. And the reason why I like them is it keeps the dog bone from just, uh, it just limits the motion when it's going back and forth. Still there. Right, here goes the next screw. There we go. All right. That's one side. Now I can work on the other. So again, just make sure these are pointing down uh, when you're installing this. I will install the top one first. So I'll grab the little hat. And I need a screw.
There we go. All right. So again, I'll grease up the foam. I'll actually introduce that foam. Now we'll grease up the dog bone. Now, if you're wondering why they're called dog bones, because they look like a bone that would be given to a dog. All right, oops, there we go. So I'll put one of those little hats on the other side, on the bottom, and I can hold this, put the screw So right off the bat, there's an issue that I'm seeing with that foam. And the foam, let me just double check. So the foam, according to the manual, should go on this side. The problem is, if you see this, when you turn, that dog bone is going to fly out. Here we go. Well, I mean, I overdid it, I exaggerated, but... Depending on the articulation, that dog bone, that on a slight impact, that thing will fly out. So what I'm actually going to do, given this bit, uh, I'm going to put the foam actually in the middle. I'm not going to put it on the outside. So here, if you see the manual, you know, the foam goes in there. And I will not put the foam there. I will put the foam over here for that reason. So let me swap one out, and then I'll show you. this is the first car that I ever built where the dog bones actually come out without disassembling this section and now let the foam there we go all right perfect so now when this thing articulates notice the dog bone is still inside of this cup by putting the foam on the opposite side uh, Therefore, this is the way I'm going to build it. So I can go ahead and attach this. I'll use the pliers, it'll be easier. All right. This is now attached to the steering. Dog bone's still there. Well, let's see. If I were to attach this here, maybe I was wrong. The issue now that I'm having is spinning this. Ah, too far. There we go. All right. Oh, drats. So I'm comparing the two at this time. This thing fell out. Let 
There we go. All right. So, so I'm going to go ahead and install them. One of the two I'm going to undo, and I'll let you know shortly which one. Actually, now that this is... Uh, yep, I'm going to undo this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the foam on the inside. Uh, and the reason why is this is with the steering already connected. So full steering. All right, I'm not turning this. I'm turning the steering. Now, this is something that you can... You can work with your endpoints, but that, let me see if I can point, uh, light's not coming through and everything's black, uh, but this, this is right at the edge. So any small little impact, that dog bone's going to fly out. So that means that I'm not going to build it the way the manual has it. I'm gonna put the foams on the inside. There we go. All right, remove the dog bone. And there. All right. See, this is the very first time I can actually do that. Or at least the first model. Maybe there's other models that that can be done to. Oh, it's probably because I'm used to a hub. No, my, my Fortec has a similar design. Oh, but that one has CVDs. That one doesn't have shafts. All right, that's probably why. Maybe it's a pivot ball design. Uh, the amount of articulation because you don't have a caster block. That's, that has to be the reason why. There's no caster block, so this thing easily pops out. Uh, and then my X4 has pivot balls, so that would never be an issue. Sorry, um, CBDs, so that would never be an issue. All right, good. So here we go. So the front is completely built. That is all your suspension movement. There's there's no more. You don't need any more because uh, there's so little suspension travel. Hmm. So droop, you would extend these, but we're going to see how it does as is. All right, good. So now I have four more hats. Those are going to go to the rear. So these will go to the rear. And for the rears... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have to use, I think I use these regular ones, which is a lot easier. And tell me it is so, the answer is yes. All right, perfect. So again, uh, you want them to be a mirror image. So if you place them there, drive them both through the top. So if you flip them, uh, they would be, one of them would be on the other side. And this is what I'm wondering. I'm wondering why they didn't just include something like this. And the only thing I can come up with is maybe they have so many of those uh, ball ends left over in order to keep a certain level of production. They probably just find use for them. So they probably produce, I don't know, let's say a thousand of them. It would be a lot more than that. Uh, but then they don't know what to do with 200 of them, so they figured, okay, well, we have a bunch of set screws. We'll just do that. That is a high chance. <clears throat> All right. 
So let me line up the car this way. And here we go. Uh, all right, so at this point, uh, we can do something very similar. Now in the rear, these are not going to be turning such as those, but I think I can do the same thing. I'm just gonna put the foams in the middle because I think the foams in the middle, uh, I think that works a lot better and I have uh, these two foams left. Uh, although it does not call for them in the back. So maybe I will not install them, but I want to does not call for them either. So it's it's just the front. And in the front, it appears that it's just there. Interesting. Well, uh, I'm gonna do a little mock installation. So I'll place this here just to get an idea. Dog bone will go in there. So if that were there. So before I install everything, uh, that's quite a shift. I could leave them this way. Or I could put a foam. I'll leave them. I'll leave them as is. I'll save you though. Oops. All right. So dog bones. I'll just grease them now. <laughs> Where's the other one? Oh, great. Oh, it's there. There it is. Blends to everything else. Right, that one's ready to go. That one is ready. All right. Good. Now we need a hat. So we'll install the top one first. And we're using the 12 millimeters. So 12 millimeter. Let's see, 12 millimeter. Come on. There it is. All right, so 12 millimeter screw. So we're not using 12 millimeters, we're using a 12 millimeter screw. All right. So what I was doing is I was shifting the hub to make sure that the screw was going in straight. It was just easier to move the hub than it was to move the screw. All right. Not that it has to move left and right, but still. All right. Now, that is there. Did I install this correctly? Hold on. Yes, they go forward. Good. Uh, but now, no, 
one is set, so I can go for this one. And I'll put the dog bone after. I want to make sure I have one screw in. And let's see. That's a 12. This is a 12. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there's the hat. Here's the dog bone. Go ahead and install the dog bone. go. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> this works. All right. It's moving smoothly. So now we need to lock these. And now Dog bones are in. This is in. There is something that I am missing. Oh, yep. I think I missed a, an important step.
All right, so I missed an important step and that's installing the little balls right in here, which means I'm gonna have to remove this whole thing, install the balls and then put the links in there. All right, so I went ahead and installed those balls. It's just a nut that goes in here, puts a little bit of thread lock, uh, and then hold it and then do that. So I did have to remove this, no big deal. Uh, but let's see now, I need the links. So the links are already made, good thing. So these are the 12s, which are gonna look on A12. And before I put this on, I should have put the link on. So that would be another recommendation, put the link on before. <clears throat> there we go. Well, if you get turnbuckles for these ends, uh, that would actually be a very good idea. It would make it a lot easier to adjust toe because the only way that you could adjust toe on this car would be to add washers, like I mentioned in the beginning, right in here. And then you can add a washer here to add toe, or you can add a washer over here to get rid of toe, or uh, there was a washer that was installed there. You can get rid of that. One of the things that I noticed is this isn't all the way in. Oh, it's not this spinning. All right, well, we'll fix that later. And so I have to fix that. Let's go ahead and install this link right over here. up and down uh, and that is it for the suspension so at this point if I had to take a wild guess uh, it'll either be the shocks or it'll be the hexes more than likely it'll be the shocks and it is the shocks oh well, we're missing a few little caps we're missing the little caps to go here I wonder if those just clip on those are these uh, so you have to go back to the D uh, it look like they just clip on. Hmm. Oh, there's a little tiny screw that holds them. There's a little tiny screw that holds this cap in there. Uh, here we go. So it's these. And uh, I would say go ahead and install them just, just because it gives it a clean look. That's the only reason why. These are 1.5 millimeter screws. Probably should have just cut them all off.
Oh, it doesn't seem like much, but it does make it look a lot better. All right, there we go. This looks nice and neat, actually. Really neat. All right, so it's time for the shocks. Fun part, yay. I'm gonna build the dampers now. So off camera, I went ahead and just put a bunch of this uh, goop on the O-ring. So those are gooped and the shafts as well. Uh, I'm only gonna build one on camera. And the reason why is once you build one, you you know how to build the rest of them because uh, we're building them all the same. And that's the reason why. And I am going to use this oil, this the clear, uh, which is 900. Uh, 900 fuse weight instead of CST, uh, it's about 67 weight. And I, I would not use really light oil. The springs are actually quite hard. So vehicle would bounce quite a bit. And the thing is with this style suspension, uh, you need a lot more resistance. And the reason why is the lever arm. So if you've seen my Revo videos, for example, I actually dislike the suspension on the Revo. Some people really love it, are crazy over it. I strongly dislike it. Uh, but anyway, that aside, it, if you look at the distance from this fulcrum, right, this pivot point to this, and then compare the distance from here to there or here to here, really, this is the distance here, because this works out as a lever. I mean, just look at the difference in travel between here and here. This is applying a massive amount of torque on this end. So you want something that's stronger to create the sub effect if the damper were here. If the damper were here, uh, you would need less, but it's not here, it's here in the style of suspension. So you need something that's stronger, stiffer. Now, uh, that being said, so uh, all of these are gonna come with a bottom cap. So this is what's gonna hold the O-ring and everything in place. So this will screw onto here. And one of the important things uh, when you're working with this is to not cross thread anything. So if you accidentally cross thread the shocks, it's gonna be a disaster. You're just gonna need new shock bodies or new caps or something. If you're already planning on upgrading to maybe some, I think it's Yaw Racing, I forget the name. Uh, they make some aluminum shocks, uh, then yeah, go for it. Actually, th those are pretty nice. They're very similar to the uh, Tamiya's. Uh, they, they actually have some of the, the exact same color. I wouldn't be surprised if they were made by the same company. Possibly, I'm not surprised. And I'm thinking of the, uh, the R versions of Tamiya. So for example, my uh, M08R. I'm not sure if I've ever shown that one in video. I don't think I have. I think I showed a regular M08 build long ago, but not M08R. Um, if you're planning on getting a Mini, I would say the R is worth the money. It, the, they're really nice. They're much nicer. Much nicer parts. Adjustments are a lot easier because you get the actual turnbuckles uh, versus just these weird... You get the links with a little set screw, so then you have to take off the link and then turn it instead of just using a wrench and turning the buckle. All right, here's the body. So there's the body. <clears throat> now uh, we're going to be using the short rod end. So this is the one that we will be using, uh, not the long one. So that's something else that's important. Use the short one, but I know the shafts are really long. Uh, you're gonna be using off the A tree there's a little tube right here. So this is uh, A5. So it's these little tubes right here. You will need these because these are your limiters. So you're gonna be using these to limit. These will actually go in the shaft. All right, first thing to do, you grab one of these little E-clips and E-clips are wonderful. Not, I dislike them but they make things less expensive, I'm sure. Uh, nope. So 
just grab the e-clip use some pliers and they're called e-clips because they're an e-shape so if you've never used an e-clip i don't think the camera will zoom in and actually view it there's a little tooth here in the middle so this sort of looks like an e make sure that tooth is in that little groove uh, or else it's it will pop out so that's something to keep in mind now now we need the piston now the piston there are three options for the piston uh there's sure let me show you right here uh right there so we have three pistons and then for the piston depending on the holes that's how much damping will occur so this one hole because it's only one not much oil is going to go through this one will allow more oil this one will allow even more oil so you can use this one with light oil and this one with heavy oil and you you're going to get some similar results not the same actually because every time you try pushing fluid through a small hole like this and speed it it will heat up uh, so that that's one of the reasons why maybe you want to go with a even heavier roll. But according to the manual, you use the one hole with that heavy oil anyway, and you're going to need it. If you don't, you're going to see how the car is going to bottom out. Uh, now, I know I've been criticizing the uh, Revos. Uh, that's why that suspension, that's one of the reasons why I probably didn't make it uh, to the sledge because the sledge is way better far better vehicle All right. now one of the things here oh wait hold on hold on hold on I'm missing the washer all right here we go it's like a little washer spacer that's where it seats and this thing goes here. Make sure there's no lint. Uh, yeah, the, the Revo, you really need to adjust the suspension because it loves bottoming out. It's it's smooth, don't get me wrong, but not really a monster truck. If you say, oh, it's a race monster truck, all right. We'll say it's a race vehicle. We'll pretend it is. I mean, if, if it were that great, buggies would have been using it for a while. Sledge would be using it as well. Uh, there we go. And that's it. <clears throat> so there's a clip, a little spacer. It's a 0.7 millimeter. Uh, you have your piston and you have your, your top clip. And if you need a file, use a file because you want to make sure that this is nice and round. Uh, so that's the reason why I didn't just break the piston off the tree. So I want to make sure I cut it properly. All right. So now I'm going to use two O-rings for the bottom. And you need to make sure that you put some goop on here or something to lubricate it. You can use grease. You can use oil. I just don't like the feeling of oil, the, the way the uh, silicone oil feels. <clears throat> now you take the little cap. And the, one of the most important things that I can tell you is go left. And then once you feel a click, heard it, then you go right. Because once you hear that click, that click means that the threads have set. So they've aligned. So now you're good to thread everything. There's a little bit of material here on the cap that I'm going to remove it. I don't think it's going to hit the spring. But still, just it's just nicer. All right, this will go in here. Now, <clears throat> uh, you should never use regular pliers, for example, to grab this. I mean, you can, not a big deal. Uh, but you really want something that is smooth. If you use regular pliers, uh, just use a piece of like, shop towel fold it and then grab onto it so you don't damage the shaft. Although, I'll be honest, if you do more this part of the shaft, it's never gonna go inside of the actual shock. 
uh, because of this limiter right here. So you don't really have to worry about it that much, to be honest. But say you were building regular shocks, that mooring will destroy the O-rings. So that's, that's one of the things that you want to watch out for. So now, let's see. This doesn't really give me a length. So I'm not sure how long they're supposed to be. So what I will do is I will just measure. And then I'll just make sure they're all the same length. Uh, there we go. Let's see. All right, so that's all the way in. I'll go ahead and get this stuff out of the way. And I'll go ahead and measure. So something you always want to measure, and the reason why is if one shock is longer than the other, even if it's a millimeter, it'll make a big difference. Uh, so here, I think the easiest thing will just be to measure from here to here. I'll do that. Although maybe I want to do overall length. All right, so my goal is to get them all around 31.8 in here. That's my goal. All right. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and fill this. And you do not have to fill it all the way to the top. The reason why is if you overfill in the beginning, a lot of it could spill out once you drive the piston up. I'm not sure if the camera's showing the bubbles, but there's a lot of bubbles. You want to get rid of all those bubbles. They're just gonna do this a few times. And then if you have a shock stand, uh, you can just place this on the shock stand and then do the rest. So you can assemble them all and put the oil on them all and then just actuate the shock and do that. Uh, and there's a variety of different stands that you can get. I would just get an off-road stand. They're a lot higher. So for example, this is a touring car. They're much lower. Uh, and this would just seat here. So it's just low. So, so this is, I mean, you, you would have to put it up in a larger stand. Or you can get something like this, for example. This is much taller. So this one, I would be able to set it here. And there's space on the bottom. I don't want to flip this because I have the oil. Uh, but this is another stand that you could get. And this is made so that the car can also sit here. And then it just rotates. <clears throat> All right. So let me just get it close to my eyes. So I'm going to be off camera for a little bit. Oh, there's more bubbles. All right. A little more oil. And never drive the piston above the oil level. That's something else too. All right, bubbles are almost gone. And it's all right, uh, you're gonna see a meniscus. Uh, that's fine to have a meniscus. If you, uh, if you add uh, more oil to sort of level it out, just keep in mind that once you install everything, some of that oil is gonna leak out, which is all right. Not a big deal. Something you should have handy though is a towel. Just to absorb oil will probably leak out. So there, this is sitting on top of the oil. As soon as I put the cap, some of that is going to leak out. So again, cap, uh, go left. As soon as you feel it click, then start going right. Now, a few little things to note here. I am not getting rid of any of the pack, which means that there's going to be quite a bit of rebound on the shock. It depends on how you're building, why they're building. But here, uh, the reason why I'm leaving the pack is because it's such a short throw, it's not really going to become an issue. But you see that rebound, how much it rebounds? Uh, maybe later I would get rid of some of the pack, uh, but I'm not, I'm gonna try it this way and then I'll go through and adjust them. Right now my goal is to get all four shocks the same. Uh, that's that's just really it, that's really my goal. Uh, all right, now where, here it is. All right, so now we need the spring seat. 
will be this one right over here. And you can use some snips to snip this off. You can use a small little blade, although be careful with the blade, you could cut yourself. Just be careful with everything. Uh, remember, these things are tools, not toys. All right. And uh, let's see. So this will go here, go here, and I'm not sure how this actually works. Hold on. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Totally screwed up. This goes over here. Ta da. All right, so the seat actually goes on this other side. <laughs> that's the reason why. Uh, all right, so so that's it. That's all your shock is. This is all the movement. I mean, this massive shaft, and that's all that it will do. Uh, so you have to build four, but that is it. This is what they look like. So have fun building them. Uh, I am going to install a little preload clip Let's see, probably number six. That's what it that's what it calls for. So I'll install a six. Now preloads. Uh this is don't go wild and crazy with preloads. If your car is bottoming out, uh it's not the problem of the preload. It's the problem of your oil. So go with thicker oil if it bottoms out too much. Now obviously adjust the right height first. So so it could be the preload. So really quick, preloads. Uh what they do is they preload the system, but they control the ride height. So you should have a certain ride height, say five millimeters. Let's say you go with five millimeters in the front, five millimeters in the rear. Uh, and then after that, maybe you'll go uh, five in the front and 5.2 or 5.4 in the rear. So play around with it. Maybe you want to go with a higher ride height, maybe 5.4 in the front and 5.6 in the rear. Uh, that's what preloads do. Preloads adjust the height. So the height is important. But let's just say your height is set where you want it, where you sh should have it. And say that height is, let's just say 5.5 millimeters all around. And the car is bottoming out. You probably need thicker oil or you need to drive on a smoother surface. But anyway, uh, this is it. That's the damper. So damper one is finished. The rest of them, uh, I will finish them off camera, but let me just show you how to install it. And then I'll uh, show you the, the car after. So at this point, since we have it, uh, all right. So you want the shock body to be inside of the vehicle. So this will go over here and just Pick a nice little flat surface. Oh, these pliers are actually really good. These ends, these are for the shock uh, shafts. So get something like this. These were pretty inexpensive. I got these uh, at uh, AliExpress. Just be careful when you're shopping online, make sure it's a reliable vendor. But that's where I bought them. They were very inexpensive. All right, so that's one. And now, uh, this needs to be clipped over here and it'd probably be best if I use pliers. And that's it. And then, uh, just make sure this goes this works and actuates and you're, you're good to go. So we're going to do that to all four. All right, dampers are all installed. Uh, let's see. So a uh, quick little note, uh, the length originally I'd given was a shorter length. Uh, the best length, I would say, is about 33.3, uh, because on that shorter length, what I started noticing, it was this damper right here, uh, the plastic started changing a grayish color, meaning that the shaft was starting to protrude past.
past the link, which is not a good thing. So keep it a little longer, 33.3 uh, would be a good length in there in between. Uh, all right, so I left the servo to the end. I went ahead and ran power to it, so this was uh, centered. You wanna be about three degrees forward. Uh, so this is about right. Uh, I installed the balls right in here, so it's just that little ball nut, and then a screw on the bottom, just eight millimeter. Threaded that in with a little bit of thread like. Uh, now I'm gonna install the links. So the link, I went ahead and cut uh, two of the links off of this tree. Uh, there's no number that I can see. Maybe there is one somewhere. Uh, but for these, uh, one side is generally left thread, the other one is right thread. So this is right thread. So the short side is the right threaded side. So here, you wanna thread this to the right. And let me see if I have a wrench that is this small. There's one in the tools, but it's generally very thin and not the easiest to use. Let's see if it's a 325. It's a 325, I am golden. No, oh, it's larger than 325. Maybe it's a four millimeter. Oh, four millimeter, still golden. All right, here we go. And I'll use my T-wrench if you have one of these. They're pretty useful. It's not big enough though for this link. So I guess not as useful as I thought. I'll just do it by hand. Now, I have no idea what the length is to be honest. I've, uh, I skipped it somewhere in the manual. I don't know what the distance is or the length is. Uh, but I'll, I'll go through the pages shortly, just in case I missed it, then you can tell me when to stop on the pages. Uh, so this one is left thread. So this one you want to turn left. So the long side is left thread. So what this means is the way that I'm holding this, if I were to turn the turnbuckle right, it would shorten it. If I turn it left, it would lengthen it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I'll probably stop right there. So before I install it, I'm actually curious. Right, this would have to be shorter if I wanted to fit there because that's about neutral position on the car. So it would have to be shorter. But let me just skim through the manual real quick. All right. Uh, right here, nothing about turning. Servo is on the next page. Here it is. And I'm looking for that link. Uh, so we did this. Uh, there's the servo. There's a little ball. That's what I installed. Uh, all right, let's go to the steering. Here's the steering. All right, so the steering is on page 11. see anything. Maybe once I link, oh, wait. Okay, more steering. Still, I don't see the link. So, uh, just put on the comments. Oh, here it is. Found it, finally. Sheesh. All right, this is why I completely missed it, because I was busy building this. So, it's on page 12. Page 12, it says 26, 26 millimeters. That doesn't make sense. Uh, I have no idea what that character is. But it says 26. Uh, all right. Somebody put in the comments what that means. That would be great. Um, but it does say 26. Maybe that's 126. Could be. Well, let's, let's see. If 126 is close enough, then I will say that's probably it. Or maybe it's just 26. It's going to be 26, so I have to make it a lot shorter. All right, well, that will be simple. Uh, let's see, this is the right thread. And I want to end with both of them facing the right way. 
So the reason why I decided to go with the right thread is because this had more threads than this one. So now they're more even, a little more. All right, so millimeter, and I can take most of it off the right side. All right, so I'll do a whole turn. I'll measure again. I may go off the left this time. Uh, 26.5, so uh, one more turn. Let's see, where should I take the turn? I can go on the right side. Well, I can go half a turn here, and then half a turn here. So I'll take it off both sides. All right, there we go. Uh, it's 26.24. I'm not going to worry about it until it's in the car. Once it's in the car, uh, I'll adjust everything through here. Uh, it'll just be easier if I do it that way. And if I place this, let's see which direction does it have it. It has this toward the back. So that means that if I have it toward the back and I spin this right, it would be the same thing as spinning this left, which means it's going to extend it. So if I go right, it's going to make it longer. If I go left, it's going to make it shorter. Do I really want it that way, then? I almost feel like I want it the other way, so it's short when I go right and long when I go left. All right, well, that's the way it is. Uh, so we'll leave it here. Oh, yeah, I can really tell this is off. Uh, well, let me try adjusting it and I'll take another measurement. Keep in mind, this will also affect it, but this is fine. Uh, so where is that little wrench? So like I said, if I go left, it'll shorten it. Oh, I actually want to make it longer. Hmm. Alright, so the reason why I'm going to keep... So, so the car is turning right. If I make it longer, it'll shift it left. I'm going to go ahead and put a battery on. Alright, transmitter's on. At least it's smooth, nothing's binding. All right, let's make it longer. Uh, I want to go right. And the reason why is I don't want to use up all of the trim on my transmitter. Right now the transmitter is set to zero, so the closer to zero, the better. So according to the manual, it's 26. I am obviously not going with 26. Uh, might be too much. Let's go back. But it should be a good starting point, to be honest. All right. Once you have the wheels and you run it, so then you can adjust everything else. All right. Transmitter's off. All right, so next steps. Uh, now I'm going to mount the hexes uh, just to get them ready for the wheels, to put the wheels on. And uh, another note that I have to do is I got really excited putting on bearings. Uh, don't do that. And the reason why is the Tamiya's, there is a bushing, a little nylon bushing that goes in between the bearings which means that now I have to remove the outer bearings in order to install that little bushing, which is that one right there. So this foam, this is an extra piece of foam. And it just bounced, who knows where. Oh, found it, it's way back there. That's fine, it can stay there. Uh, all right, so bearings have to come off. Grab one of these, insert it, 
Now the bearing can go in. And once the bearing's in, just drive one of these pins through. And then the hex, notice those little tabs. That's it. Uh, and then you, uh, the nut's not really going to help much, but at this point you really want to put the wheels. If you shift the car, these will fall out and then you can drop a pin. So just be mindful of that. So at this point, I'm just going to put the bushings in. So just leave the bearings to the end, the outer bearings. I know the shaft's going to be dangling a little. That's all right. So we'll insert the pin. I need to shift this. There we go, too much. So I want the pin to be somewhat horizontal so that it doesn't slide out. All right, go ahead and turn this. Go ahead and just do this. All right, and that is it. So at this point, I can go ahead and deal with the battery tie. Uh, I am not going to do the wheels yet, although I could. Uh, actually, I probably should if I'm gonna be flipping this. Uh, but no, I'll do the battery tie. Uh, so the battery tie, you need these little covers here. Now, a quick little thing, I'm not going to install the foams yet. I'll install them later, but one of the things that you want to do is, um, so this will sit like this. You you want to put a piece of foam, a little square there, here, maybe some foam here just for the battery. So right, these two, one, two, and then maybe here three. Uh, that'd be good places. Or at least one, two, and then put some foam right here. Uh, it would actually be on the back over here just so if the battery shifts, uh, the foam will absorb the shock. That's the only reason why. So you're gonna need that, and then you will need this little C-looking thing. And this is the same setup as the minis. So if you've built a mini uh, for the battery, it's the same thing. Right here, which means that I actually have the carbon fiber ones off of the M. MOAR because I didn't use the carbon fiber. I decided to just use the plastic one, so I could install them here. I just don't want to. I uh, prefer these. These will simply go here, right in here, and it's just an eight millimeter screw. So you're gonna grab the eight millimeter screw. It's two of them. And So snug is all you need, don't overdo it. That's it. Uh, now you will be needing body clips. So there's a chalk load of body clips that are included. Uh, the clips will hold the battery in place. Let me just grab two of these. You grab this cover, this goes this way. It'll mount right in here. And then you just drive a clip in. And then you drive the other one in. And that's ultimately what holds your battery. You just 
do the same thing to the other side. You slide the battery in and then you plug it in and that's the way it works. And if you have a bunch of parts left over, it's normal. Uh, and the reason why is because Tamiya reuses some of its parts. So they have different models that use them. So if you had an M08 or uh, M07, this would be the same exact parts tree you would get with the body post, uh, these little links. These actually link the rear body post to the chassis on the, on the minis. So if you have a mini and you need post, you have spares. All right, let's see, two more body clips. One and two. There we go. All right. So at this point, I could, let me hold this this way. I could decide where to put the switch at this point. I could put it inside, I could put it out here. So we'll see. And I could put it up here as well. So we'll, we'll have to see. Maybe I'll wait until the body is ready to figure out where to mount this might be, I'll, I'll probably have to do that, wait until the body's ready, and then figure out where to actually place the switch, because the body is actually quite tight. Uh, go in here, I get my finger in there, not really. That's gonna be a tough one, I'll figure it out. I mean, this thing's so long, I could even run it back here. That's a bad idea, it's in the way of the servo. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm gonna go to the next step. So, so again, I'm skipping the wheels and tires for now because I don't need to do that at this time. And uh, we need to go with the rear diffuser, body post, and bumper. So those are some fun ones. Uh, so here's the front bumper. Bumper will go ahead and take that off. Here's the rear diffuser. So rear diffuser. Let's go ahead and remove this. This one did not cut uh, off so cleanly like the front one did. And I will need, I'm not sure if I need both of them or just the one. Let's see, so I need this big one. You can always use snips. That'll that would be helpful. Alright, so this one goes with the rear diffuser. And I will also need the body post. The body post are the number one, so it's these long ones. Alright. go. There's one. So let's go ahead and cut the other. And I need a new blade. This one's getting dull. All right. Let's see, 10 millimeter screws, should be these, perfect. All right, so I need two 10 millimeter screws. I have them right here. Those are going to be for the rear body post. And the rear body post will go right in here. So there's these two holes and they're keyed. So if you look at this here, this is keyed. This will go right in here. 
as I'm probably going to lose the hexes while I'm turning everything. And this is why you want the wheels and tires already installed. Not the way I did it. grab the other one. So again, this is keyed. Go this way. Body poster there. And now, uh, let's see, I need to find that little screw. I wonder if it's these. I don't think it's these. Oh, I think it is. All right, so I'm going to use this little tiny guy, so uh, two millimeter by 12. And this will hold this little bit onto the rear diffuser. So that screw goes right here in the back, so there's that hole in the back. It'll go right in there. And then if I grab this diffuser with this little cutout facing up, so this facing up, this will seat Is it on the top or the bottom? It appears to be the top. And it's supposed to face rearward, so it'll go this way. And one of the ways to tell is these two notches here. Let's see. These two. So one, two, three. Notice it'll match this. One, two, and then three where the screw is. This oh, is a hex. Sorry, not a hex. It's a Phillips. When I was a kid, I used to strongly dislike flathead screws, just in general. I used to prefer Phillips. And then once I grew and I encountered hex screws, I started disliking Phillips because hex screws are so, so much better. All right, that is it. All right, this is installed. Uh, so now at this point, I can go ahead and install this onto the car and then I can install the other two these other two right on there so for these I will need eight millimeter screws so there's three eight millimeter screws and these will go back here I need this for now so we'll put that away and this sits on top so I'll come down from the bottom stuff. Next. And the next one. All right, 
So this is what I was referring to. And I guess I could put some tape on there. All right, so let's go ahead and install those, these two top little screws. I'm getting that one started. Now the body's held only by three posts. So it's those rear two that I just installed and then the front one right here. So it's just these three. And these two, uh, these are going to be neat. Uh, you're going, you will need to clip these off unless you really want them long in case you flip, it protects the body to a certain degree. I mean, yeah, it's up to you. My MO8, they're still full length, but I am going to trim them. Um, my MO7, they're trimmed. That one has a hatch body. It, if it flips, it just goes back to the wheels because of the rounded shape. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, now the front nose. So the front nose, I need countersunk screws and I need four 10 millimeter screws. So that is four countersunk screws, 10 millimeters, and that's for the front. So this goes between here and here, and I'll slide right in there. Now, for this, I will have to flip the car upside down. And the reason why I flipped it that way, is I went front to back instead of side to side, so I wouldn't lose the hexes. Uh, and the reason is, I still need to wash the wheels. So I will be using, I'm not gonna show the entire process, but to mount the wheels, the, the the tires onto the wheels. Yeah, good job, good job. To mount the tires onto the wheels, I am going to use uh, dish soap just to get that release agent off. And then I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol. So I'll use the dish soap on the tires, rubbing alcohol on the wheels. Maybe I should use them on both. And then I'll go ahead and glue them. So I'm going with the center screws first. That is simply my choice. And then once I've placed all four, then I'm gonna just check them by hand with a regular driver. Screws already there. All right, now I'll check them by hand. There we go, and that is it. Uh, so at this point, the only thing I have to do is, uh, well, I have to deal with the, the wheels and tires. Well, so once I do the wheels and tires, we'll go ahead and attach them. And then I'll have to move on to trimming the body so I can figure out where to place the switch. Uh, I am going to end up replacing these connectors because they're not long enough. So uh, I may remove the ESC solder new wire or I'll just put a connector here uh, with bullets. Now, the thing with connectors is uh, you do use amperage uh, because of the resistance when you add connectors, so that's something. But uh, it would be the easiest and quickest way to go about. So maybe I'll go with some I don't know, bullet connectors to my batteries. All of my batteries are five millimeter connectors, but I do have some uh, 
XT90 connectors that I can just put in here, make an adapter. Actually, I already have an adapter. Uh, I already have an adapter, so that would work. I just need an XT90 and right here, that's it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go onto the wheels and tires. All right, I was actually not planning on showing how to glue, how to glue tires. I uh, already started. This is the only one I didn't finish. I decided to do it. So once you clean everything up, you can use just regular alcohol or you can wash them with uh, just a, a dish soap because it will remove all the grease and oils from the molding process. But one of the things to keep in mind is rotation. So these are directional tires. These go only one way. So if you're mounting them here, the wheel has to face uh, this way, right? If you're mounting on the other side, then you have to flip the tire. So notice this is, this does not match. So that means that you're gonna have two left and two right side tires. So that's something very important. There's also a line here, directional, uh, showing you that. Uh, but uh, I still need to glue this end. Now when you wash them, remove the foam and then stick the foam back in there. Just fold the foam in half and then sort of in quarters, stick it in there and then, uh, mold it onto the tire. Well, just stuff it into the tire. But here we go. So uh, I'm actually going to be using uh, this Loctite super glue. You don't need to buy the tire CA glue. To be honest, I would say don't buy it. Uh, I do like uh, different glues. AKA is pretty good. Chick Concepts is really good. They're probably all made by the same company. Anyway, that aside, doesn't matter. The point is, the tubes are really big, there's a lot of glue. So once you start using it and opening it, air will get inside. And over time, you'll notice that the glue will take longer to dry and it'll start gelling up, which is fine, it'll still work. And then you can use uh, the, the activator to dry it instantly, but then you have to spend money on aerosol and that thing smells like you wouldn't believe. It's the same active ingredient, so same basic stuff. But these little packets, right, if one of them dries out or something, you can just toss it and then you have more packets that you can use and they're pretty inexpensive. So these, I don't remember the price, but it's it's less expensive where to go and the newer the glue, the faster it will dry. But anyway, back to the gluing. The important thing is to sort of open up the bead just a little so you get a gap and the runnier, the better, but this isn't that runny. So I'm just gonna follow this along and just going to try to let it run. And then I'll apply a little more. And the reason why is you want that glue to get inside of the actual bead of the tire. You don't want just the outside because then it'll break, it'll come off. Uh, you want it to actually sit on the rim of the wheel on the inside of the rim of the wheel. And for those of you that don't know the difference between a rim and a wheel, this whole thing is a wheel. That is the rim of the wheel. Although some people use rim and wheel interchangeably. All right, and that is it. That was a horrible job because I was looking at the camera. Now, one of the things that you can do too is you can get uh, produce rubber bands, and then you can just rubber band it while it's drying. And if you don't have them, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. But you want the rubber band. I'm gonna remove this one you want it to be close to the edge. The reason why I removed it is I got some glue on it and I don't want that glue to contact the tread because then I just ruined the tread. All right, so you do that. That's it. So that's all you would do. So that's an inexpensive way to make sure that you get a nice uh, tight glue. And then after that, you can go ahead and mount them. So it won't take very long. So again, this is something that you can use. 
and the next step will be the body. So I'm gonna switch over to the body. Uh, once this dries, I'll install it, but I'll start trimming up the body, which will take quite a while. And this is the finished product. So I did not put all the stickers because I dislike cutting stickers, just trimming them out. Uh, but this is the final body. So I went ahead and installed the mirrors. I actually don't have the footage of the mirrors, unfortunately. I'm not sure what I did. I, I think I hit the camera wrong. But I do have a few little notes. One, make sure you keep these little triangles on, right? This one I accidentally cut off. Uh, even after I said not to cut it, I accidentally cut it, as you're going to see in the video. Uh, the only thing I did is I just taped it to this piece right here. So it's taped on there. Uh, but if you are going to run this, uh, just drill a little hole in there, put a little screw with a nut so that'll hold. Uh, per the instructions, you should do that here, here, and a few other spots as well, uh, such as down here, down there. Just in case you cr uh, crash, this thing doesn't fly off. Same thing back here in the wing, there's two holes. Did not do that uh, because I like the way it looks. Uh, honestly, that's the only reason why. Uh, but I don't have the footage, uh, but the important thing is the mirrors align with this. You're gonna see some little dimples. Uh, just ream them out, about 3.5 millimeters is really all you need, and then this will go through. Now, quick little note, uh, I did go through all of the parts, everything for this car. I did not find the three screws that hold the halo on. Uh, so your kit hopefully has them. Uh, mine, I could not find them at all. Uh, so because I could not find them, I did not install them. They're supposed to be two by six uh, screws. Uh, so what I did is I just glued it. It's just super glued. So I used uh, actually Loctite glue, not super glue. Uh, CA glue is similar. It'll probably work. Uh, but those are some of the notes that I have when building the body. So we have, so unfortunately I don't have the footage doing this, uh, but this is the rest of the body. And this is not the head that comes with it. It comes with a little helmet. It's a three piece helmet, so I didn't do that. But this is what it looks like after it's painted. These are the holes right here. And uh, for the post, when you're mounting it, so once you mount it to the body, uh, the front, on the front, I put the body clip, this body clip on the one, two, three, four, on the fifth hole from the top, which I think is the first from the bottom. Yes, the first hole from the bottom. So if we go from the bottom, that's on the first hole. This one's on the third. So on the rear, I went to the third hole. Uh, you could get away with the second if you go to the second. And these body clips are gonna hold the body from slamming down onto the rest of the car. So when you place the body on, uh, obviously begin with the post and you can trim the post. You don't have to leave them full length, but open the body slightly. And the reason why is this will hit the chassis, these little parts, because this hugs the chassis right in here. So you'll go right there and it just drops in place and that's it. Uh, so this is what the completed car looks like once you have the body. Uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, trimming the body for your car. So this is a Formula E Gen 2 car from Tamiya. So this is the body uh, that you can get on the Formula E. And some of the things I'm gonna use to trim it, I'm gonna use body scissors. Uh, these are straight, these are curved. Body reamer, and hopefully I don't have to use a blade. I do have an X-Acto knife if I need one, uh, but actually I probably will be needing it, so I might as well have it handy. So we'll do that. Uh, now with a Sharpie, so ignore this line back here, but uh, all of this needs to be trimmed. So there's a lot of material that needs to be trimmed. <laughs> it's almost half of the material. Uh, but it's all right, we'll get it done. Uh, the challenging bits will be these center parts. And this Lexan, this is thick. This is really thick Lexan. Uh, but here we go. So something, uh, always starting with a straight cut is easier. So you can go this way. Uh, this will probably be the easiest way to go, which is what I will be doing. And always work with, so whenever you're cutting stuff like this, make sure the scissors are very, very sharp. Uh, they're scissors that are made for uh, 
cutting Lexan, don't try using safety scissors. They will not work. You will destroy Lexan or the safety scissors. Now, for those of you not familiar with safety scissors, in some schools, or at least when I was a kid, they had what were called safety scissors. They're pretty much scissors that were made out of plastic. And they couldn't cut worth a... Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to finish that sentence. All right, so I'll come close. Now I'm actually going to start back here, and I'm just going to go up and follow this line. So I went up here. Now I'm just going to go straight through here and follow that line. a pretty nice cut all right now once you remove this this will be nice and flexible it makes it easier to start cutting the rest of the panels uh, but we will see so at this point i'll go this way and this will be easier again i want to get rid of some of these stiff areas to make it easier for me to bend the lexan and do some of the other cuts so here I'll hold it like this slow, don't push it. it. Alright. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this side first, then I'm going to go up here. So I'll go over here and then here. And the line is actually inside. Uh, so there's, these lines are just approximations so you can get an idea of where to cut, what not to cut. Because once you cut something off that you were not supposed to cut off, yeah, good luck putting it back. I'll make a little side cut here because this one is somewhat challenging. Something else that you could do is you could cut this corner so this flap opens up and this rear flap opens up. That's another possibility. We're going to go this way now. scissors for this side. Oh, this side was actually a lot easier. Even though it's similar bends, just on the opposite side. So now I have to trim this. I'm going to use the curved scissors. Uh, I wish I had some left handed scissors. Alright, and I'll flip them. Now, something that you can do on turns like these is you could measure and just use the body reamer. And then you can just ream the hole. So, so this is what I mean. I'm going to do an approximation. So you have to cut this, right? So try to find what the center would be. So if you were to create a radius, 
And if I had measured, I would have gotten this a lot closer. But I did not. Failed. Anyway, close enough. Considering I was measuring this while looking at the camera. But then you have a curve. So that's something you could do. All right, so now back to the straight scissors. Just gonna cut this flap off. And always be careful when you're pointing scissors towards your hand. You don't want them to slip and then next thing you know, you've cut yourself. So here I make two cuts. I did it on purpose. So I, I made a cut here and here, and that's to allow this to flap open. Because now I can just grab the scissors and go off through the other side. And so there we go. Just like that. So now I can go ahead and finish this off. Right here. Alright, and there's that curve. I'm gonna go over here and I will finish the other curve. Now you can do curves with straight scissors. The other thing you have to do is when you're cutting, if you want to do a left curve, you have to sort of do this, uh, but you can do it, it'll work. the curved scissors to finish this off. Now I can go on and try to follow some of these lines. So I will try to go all the way to here, and then I'll actually make another cut go up through here. Uh, and then this cut will also be the cut that I will follow to do the wheel well. So we will see how this turns out. Because this comes straight down, I'll actually make a cut where I go straight up.
Alright. So I have to cut through here. And there we go. So now this whole area is now free. Put that off to the side. Now, the reason why I wrote with the Sharpie on the top and not the bottom is the top has a protective film. So once I take the film off, that's coming off. So it's not a big deal. Now this is why I would recommend using curved scissors. Uh, I think X-Acto knife would work. I just think it's too dangerous. Scissors are a lot safer when doing this, but that's it. And when I'm, I'm using part of my nail when I'm doing this, don't do this really hard because you could get a cut. The leg sand will cut you. Make another cut down here. I'll actually start cutting this. So there's still a little bit of leg sand that I have to trim here, but since I started this, I'm just going to finish this off. It's just easier to do it in one motion. And then I'll come to here. And this is where I will stop. Because now I need to cut this way. But first, I will trim this little piece. And leave the protective film until after you've painted. Once you've painted the entire body, then remove it. So that way you don't get any overspray on the exterior of the body, because that's the part that will show. Right there.
So here for the nose, this you have to do slowly so that you can follow the curve. Uh, because this curve is a pretty small diameter curve. And it's not just a small diameter curve. Uh, it's also very, very stiff because of how it's molded. So I'll go and stop right about there. All right, so what I will do is I will now cut up here, mainly because I really want to free up this section over here. All right. So I'm gonna follow this line and then there's that little bit that I will have to trim right here, but I want to follow the line right here on the valence. And I am twisting the lex in just so it allows me to, to actually push the scissors through. I could trim that piece off, so that's something that you may want to consider. Just trim here. Now from time to time, I know I'm going to be off camera and I do apologize. It's just sometimes I'm looking at the camera and then sometimes I figure it's better that I <laughs> look at what I'm doing directly here, especially since I'm cutting using sharp objects. Uh, anyway, that's the reason why. Scissors make the world go round. All right, that's it. All right, that is good. And like I said, anytime you have small little curves like that, you can just use a body reamer and then uh, just make the shape that you need. Right, here I was a little off on the trimming, so I'm just going to go back. Uh, I should go this way. Now there's another video where I complained about scissors. I wish they would make a pair where the blades were opposite these, so I could cut from the other side. So instead of the blade being uh, lower left, upper right, if it were the opposite, So if the top blade were a left blade. There we go. Perfect. All right. That was a slight curve. There we go. Curve is set.
there. All right. So now I can ride up from here. And my goal is to hit that triangle. So this point right here. And I did. So now I can just follow that line and do that. And now I just need to So now I can just work my way this way. I'll start from the rear, it'll be easier. That's it. Now, one of the things to note is there's a lot of these little dimples. Those dimples, you will be using a reamer uh, for those dimples. Some of them are just going to be two millimeter holes uh, because you're going to be screwing other parts of the body on. Uh, but two of those, I think it's these, these are going to be a little larger. They're probably going to be about six and a half for the post. Uh, all right. So this being said, now we need to trim those inner parts. So we'll see how these these work. And uh, one of the things that you can do is just use the body reamer. So you could use an X-Acto knife or a blade to get it started, or you can just ream any part. I'm going to ream somewhere here in the center that's close to the line, but not quite at the line. Which line? I'll do this line, the inner line. Just somewhere in there. I'll make a hole that's nice and big. Close to the line, not exceeding the line. Uh, that's close enough. I'm gonna take my scissors, and it doesn't matter if you're actually on the line for the first cut, because because you'll you'll be there eventually. So here we go. And I'll trim a, a bigger chunk off. So at this point, I'm just removing material off the center to allow this to flex, because once it flexes. Uh, I can trim some more. And I'm trying to hit this line right here. That's my goal with the second cut. So it's not completely random, although you could make a random cut, uh, but that is my goal. So now at this point, I'm actually going to work my way back. And here we go. Right through there. So you notice this is now relatively free. This is the other reason why I wish the blades were the other way, because in order to cut this, you actually have to go this way, so it's difficult to go this way. Well, if I go through the bottom, now my fingers are hitting everything down here with the leg sand. This is hard. All right, close enough. So now that I've gone all the way, wait, no, I didn't go all the way. Let me put the scissors here. 
I want it to go all the way, but I did not. All right, so there's the blade. I want it to go all the way here. And the reason why I want to go all the way here is so I can use my scissors and start cutting here, so then I can just go up. All right, let's do this. I can put the blade through here. There we go. All right. We're getting somewhere. And there we go. Now for this part, I can actually use the curved scissors now. This would be the best option. This is where having the blades in reverse would also help. So for this, I have to go this way just because of the way the scissors are shaped. Uh, so now let me, I'll go in through the bottom. So this is pretty well trimmed now. So now I can go over here to clean the inner part up. There we go. And I will start going this way just because of the way the blade is. Uh, the, the lower blade has to be on the outs, well, I guess this would be the inside, on the inside, uh, which is why I wish they made scissors with the blades the other way. All right, so I need to stick this in. Uh, let's open up that gap a little. Place the scissors in here. All right. And that's it. Let's see. Everything looks good. All right, and that's it. So that's how you cut the inside. So it'll be the body will be like this. All right. Yeah, this is definitely this is certainly not one of the easiest body is too trim. It's far from it. Uh, there's 20 billion pieces, obviously exaggerating. Uh, when you punch a hole through, make sure that your finger's out of the way. See? Next thing you know, you're screaming your hand. You don't want to do that. If you're a kid, just have an adult do it. Here we go. There we 
All right, and I can go over here. So I'm gonna follow the same pattern. Just go straight, so my shot is that line. And be careful here because of the amount of stretch that the Lexan had to do. This is actually pretty thin. You could probably grab a blade and it would easily go through. Yep. See, a blade would easily go through there because it, it's so thin versus over here on the thicker side, it would take a lot more effort, but you can still do it. You just have to be careful so blade loves running and that's the issue. You could cut your fingers or you could cut, you could cut too much of the surface as opposed to scissors. So, but let me just show you that you can do it as I will probably screw something up. See, so now the blade is stuck and you have to remove it. And the problem is once it gets stuck, if you, you have to remove it, if you try applying more force to finish the cut, you're probably going to have the blade just run and cut too much material. Oh, that was close from there. Right, let's see, where's the line? Oh, I was going off the line. Uh, right. So point is, you can use a blade, you just have to be extremely extremely careful and I'm running into the same problem with the scissors all right so let's go this way whereas scissors are a little easier to control scissors to finish that off. There we go. Right there. go up to there. So if the top blade is the blade, I just realized these are loose. If the top blade, I need to tighten these. So if the blade that's on top is the right side, uh, all of your cuts are going to be left right so when i open this up the top blade is on the right all the cuts have to go left so i wish a company would make this where the top blade was the left side so that i could go right uh, when making some of these cuts I'm using the curb scissors here simply because they are the better choice, easier to make this cut. And again, just take it slow, take your time, you're dealing with sharp objects. Hopefully they're really sharp because if they're dull, it's going to, it will be a pain. And a uh, quick little note, I just realized this, I cut too much on this side. Uh, there's actually, this little triangle needs to stay. So, oh well, too bad. Uh, I'm gonna come in here. Uh, so remember how I told you to ignore that line? Well, apparently I didn't ignore it. 
So I was supposed to keep this little triangle. No big deal. Uh, it'll be fixed, you'll see. So there's a screw up. I'm gonna leave it on the video, so it'll be fine. And the way to fix it is just to, well, to get an extra piece of Lexan material and then just double stick tape it there or use a little screw. Keep in mind, once it's running, nobody's gonna be able to tell. I really wanna go this way. Let me flip it. So that's, this is a way to get around the scissor problem. Just flip the body. It's not as smooth though. Uh, but this is it. So this is the body. This is sort of what it's supposed to look like with the exception of that little triangle that I cut too much off of. Here I'm just trimming a piece. Let me just trim another piece. Good stuff. Here's the body. So this is the main part of the shell. Uh, there are a bunch of little holes that will have to be reamed after, but right now uh, I have to go to the other panel. So let me go ahead and take all of this off. Well, I'm gonna clean this. All right, so I went ahead and marked up the other pieces. It's just so it shows better on the camera. So I'm going, so the part is inside of the line and the line that I drew isn't the actual line that I'm cutting. The line that I'm cutting is inside of this black line. That's just to illustrate. So I think I'm gonna start with this. and I, I will just split this in half. It will just be easier to deal with two halves and be very, very careful with this Lexan. It's very, very thick. Uh, very, very thick material. I mean, this body will weigh more than 100 grams, I'm sure, once it's all finished. So I'm thinking this car is going to be a pretty heavy car. The rolling chassis, probably going to be close to 1,300 grams, I will see. Uh, the electronics that are in it are 298 grams not counting the external switch and the receiver. And I did not weigh those. So we'll see, those are probably, I don't know, maybe another 20 grams. But I'll just subtract 300, uh, just to get an approximation once I weigh it, and then I'll weigh the body, because this thing is going to be heavy. It's gonna look cool though, but it'll be heavy. And to be honest, the amount of time that it takes to trim these bodies, it's probably not worth, in case some of you are thinking, like, oh, maybe I'll trim some bodies and sell them. It may not be worth it. Then again, I don't know how much people are willing to pay for a trimmed body. Maybe. I mean, try it. Why not? Why not? Just make a machine or something that can stamp them. Might be something. And you can... Do them by the thousands. Just have a die. There we go. All right, let's do the next one. So this was, well, the first one was relatively painless. We'll see how the rest of them turn out. Maybe it'll be downhill from there. Maybe not. Let's be optimistic. Right. I have no idea how many bodies I've trimmed, but I was thinking I should probably get a new pair of scissors or get these sharpened never sharpened scissors. There we go, there's the other piece. All right, oh, man. 
they all look complicated. Let's see. So again, I'll split this in half because it's two pieces out of here. Uh, I'm not sure which ones, uh, since I have not finished, I'm not sure which one's a greater challenge to do this or Euro truck, but the Euro truck body, that one was a pain, uh, especially some of the areas because they were so thick and the curves were like such tight curves. Uh, let's see. All right, now there's a slight little curve right here. So you want to go left slightly and then slowly right. And it will be easier if you flip this over and just now come back up the other end. Right there. Ah. Eh, not bad. So there's that piece. Wait, there's no trimming on this side, right? No, I did not see anything. No, that's good. That's the heel. It almost looks like a cow's hoof. All right, right there. Anyway, let's go back to this.
Remember there's a slight little curve here. So there's a curve coming in and there's a curve going up. And like I said earlier, don't worry about it too much because once the car is running, nobody will be able to tell. It's just a minor little thing. All right, so let me push this through. All right, good stuff. Right there. That's where you need to be careful. Uh, okay, turned out well, but you can stab yourself with scissors. Uh, I should clean this one up. So I'll use the curved scissors for this one. And, all right, let's go the other way. lower portion all right and that's it so we've got both hoofs they're not hoofs I'm just calling them hooves all right uh, so this is one big large piece <laughs> this one will either be easier or a greater challenge uh, part of me for something like this I generally want to cut here and then start going well I would have to go this way uh, so maybe I'll cut here, here, get rid of this flap, and then start going this way. Just because of the shape of the scissors, I have to keep going left. these little tiny turns on the cutout. So make sure that you keep them. And I'll show you, once I finish this cut, I will show you what I mean. Might as well right up. Right here. So there's a little ear right, uh, it's not really sure. oh, there we go, right there. Uh, you wanna make sure that you keep that because you will be reaming in there. So you want that material to stay. And here, I have to go up and then around. Right here. Now this one's going to be somewhat of a challenge. So I'm just going to cut down here. And the reason is to free this up a bit. And now I'm going to go this way and cut this bottom portion. So the more material you can get rid of that has these thick curves, uh, because they end up reinforcing everything, it just makes it more difficult to cut through, bend the legs and actually make certain cuts that need to be made. Here we go, nice and slow. Here, I'm actually just going to the straight cut. I'm just going to cut right here, and that's it. Because that was a straight line. Now I can cut up, and I can cut over here as well. Perfect. All right.
right there. So might as well do this cut. So that's just a straight cut. And I wonder if I can take any shortcuts. Probably not. So let's go ahead and do this one. So I'll go here. Now I have to go down because there's a little triangle there. If you don't want to, I guess you could always just cut that triangle. Nobody's going to notice once it's running. Uh, but I'm going to leave it. Then I can pull my legs and go under and keep the shape. And I'm going to grab the scissors and cut that. So what I'm doing is, this is a straight cut. I'm just grabbing the scissors and then just doing the cut. So it frees up the legs and then it makes everything more flexible so I can do that. And then once I can open it up like this, you can actually just go through and just cut here. It'll help out even more. Uh, but at this point, just need to go slow. We'll do that. And we'll go through here. right here. Now I will make a cut straight through here. My point was to hit that little corner and the reason why is now I can put this finger here, open this as a V, stick my scissors in here and make a little curved turn. So I can start cutting this edge right here. Now the scissors are there. I can keep cutting. All the way through. Until I get to the edge. And that is it. So that is said and done. Now I can just trim that little corner. I just need to finish all of this right over here. So I will start this way. So I'll go ahead and actually remove this piece of material because it's getting in the way. Well, if I just trim it there, eh, that's all I need. And follow the line. So here I'm just trying to separate this. I will trim that extra piece of material after. So, so, so don't worry about getting the lines all the time. Uh, and the reason why I say that is sometimes you just want to finish a cut. That's the reason why. All right, here we go.
right there. All right. So now I can go back and finish off this little piece of material and the other side as well. There's a little excess there and a little bit of excess here. And that is it. So this is ready. Now this I will split down the middle because we have two pieces as well. Doing a lousy job. I was gonna cut it down the middle, but I think it'll be easier if I go through here and start cutting off this piece, and then I'll just I'll go through the middle. So what I'll do is I'll start trimming this piece right here. Now I'll remove this whole rear section. So what I'll do is I'll actually start trimming this, go here, and then I'll just go straight down. Sometimes removing some of the excess material earlier, just spending that extra time will actually save you time trimming the rest. So removing that rear flap and being able to put a hand here will just m speed this process up. Cut that. There's a slight little curve there, but I can do that later. I can deal with that once I remove this completely. Now we'll do that. Yeah, this looks sand is really... Really thick. The scissors are getting caught. Because it's such a long cut too. So here, my goal at this point, I'm not even following the line closely. So my goal at this point is just to cut through. And my thumbs all the way through. There we go. Reposition the scissors. And let's go. All right, just straighten them out. Perfect. Trying to follow the line. All right, now I'm gonna start through here, work my way up. There. All right. Go ahead and clean this up. It's just a little, I didn't miss it by that much, but still. All right, good stuff. <laughs> Right, so now I can follow this line and I'll cut all the way through so this flexes and now There we go. All right, that is trimmed. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this specific area where I'm cutting, you don't have to be perfect because this section is actually going to be underneath another body part. Uh, that's the reason why. So whatever imperfections you have here will be hidden by the other panel that will sit on top. Uh, so, ba based on my experience so far with this body, I think the Euro truck is harder to trim than this one. But given all the little screws that will have to go in this body, this one may be worse to assemble. Because the other one just assembles with, with double stick tape. Uh, and then you can use some little screws to reinforce certain areas. Uh, but that is it. So this is one of those sides. And there we go. Now, the challenging, I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but there's actually two lines. It looks like they started uh, molding this and then shifted, or maybe that's just normal, it shifts, but there's a light uh, indentation here, a light line, and then there's the thicker line. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's the thicker line that I want to follow, which is the one I will be following. So I will flip it, and the reason why is I want to do some of these straight lines first to remove some of this material here. It'll help with the trimming. And I'm just gonna cut through here. This really frees it up. So now that I've trimmed this, everything's going to be easier. Well, not everything, but these parts here with the lines, we're about to hit a challenge in a bit. And that's up here. So I'll just get to there and that is it. Now, I'm going to follow a different line. Uh, I'm gonna, I will go ahead and remove this section right here.
almost finished. So use the trip scissors for the, this little section. Actually, uh, remember what I told you about trimming excess, excess material to make it easier? That is one of those moments. So this was one of those moments. All right. Now, go ahead and grab these. And that's it. There we go. Little trim here. Right there. All right. So here are the panels. Uh, so now I have them all. Uh, so that being said, here is the main body, and this is going to go oh, off camera. So this is going to go right in this square. So right in this square, this one will go right here. Uh, and I guess one of the nice things about these panels being separate pieces, uh, you can paint them separately too. So if you want a different color scheme, uh, for example, these, if I had to take a wild guess, they're gonna be the side uh, right here. Should they go here? Yeah, they'll go right here. So these will be the sides. So you can paint, paint these a different color, which I, I, may, I just may, uh, and this will go here. So let's see, do the, yeah, they line up. Uh, so these line up, so it goes here, and then the other one's going to go on the other side. So it almost looks like a Batmobile. This one would go there, so just on the opposite side. And then this wing is going to tie all three pieces together, so it'll tie the two side skirts, or the two side panels, and then this. Uh, these, if I looked up the instructions, it would be easier. I'm definitely gonna look at the instructions. Uh, let's see, there's a picture in here. I guess I could figure it out. Uh, these will probably go on the inside, uh, but let's see. All right, so if you look at the panels, all right, double stick tape, good stuff. I may just use double stick tape instead of using all the little screws and nuts, to be honest. It would be a lot easier, uh, but... Uh, the first thing that you want to do before painting anything is uh, drill the holes for the body post. All right, so based on this, these go here. So this one will go here. Let's see, how does this attach though? Am I putting this wrong? All right, so this panel would go here. This panel would sit here. All right, so this one goes here. So this will attach to this, and this will go here. Right in there. So this X, uh, this triangle that I cut out, not a big deal. I can just affix it to this portion. Because uh, this will go, it looks like it goes, yep, that's, this is the correct one. Mm -hmm. We'll go like this, and these little guys, I have no idea, I'll figure it out. So let me go ahead and clean everything up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some paint. And then I'll be back and I'll point to where the panels go. 
All right, so before I paint this, I have to go ahead and drill these out. So there's these two little dimples here. Those match up to the rear post. And I believe six and a half millimeters will do. And if you have a body reamer, body reamer will have the numbers. So that's about six and a half. Uh, camera's not picking up the numbers. So go there. And yeah, six and a half, that's what you need. Let's go ahead and ream the other one. And again, when you're punching through, get your fingers out of the way. All right, so 6.5 is our goal. All right, here we go. All right, now the front one, let's see, yep. All right, dimple matches. I just want to make sure. So that's the front one right here. And I'm looking for that 6.5. And that's it. So one of the things that I'm noticing is the wires. Uh, these wires. I'll have to strap them down just so they don't interfere with the body when it's mounted. Uh, no big deal. Right. But there we go. I may have to lift the body anyway. So we'll see once it's installed. Uh, the front looks like it would go all the way to the bottom. I'm not sure about the rear though. I don't know what the rear height of the body would be. But the front that like could go all the way to the bottom just because of how this fits in the front uh but here we go so uh that's uh one step closer to completion so now i have to go wash all these panels clean them uh just make sure there's no oils and then apply some paint probably going to do something very very basic um uh, more than likely i'll probably paint this green this black uh, I'm not sure what to do with this. I mean, this could be green as well. Maybe I'll do black side panels. So this can be black or silver. I could do these silver. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what I do. But that'll probably all be green. This will be black. This will probably be silver. That's probably what's going to happen with this car. Well, uh, it's time for me to get ready to paint. All right, so I'm gonna put the body together. I'll deal with uh, reaming holes and screws at some other time. Uh, the reason why you may wanna put some screws on some of these parts is so they don't fly out uh, if you crash. Uh, that's a possibility. Now, a tape that I like, I really like this Gorilla tape. Uh, this is a Gorilla double-sided tape. And the reason why, one, you can tear it or you can just use scissors uh, just realized I don't have the long ones here. Oh, there they are. All right. I don't like using the body scissors on these because then I, you have to clean the gunk off. Uh, but <clears throat> the reason why is it's very thin, very thin, very low profile. And that's the reason why I really like this tape. Uh, I've actually used this tape for ESCs as well. But if you're going to use it on ESC, make sure the ESC is flat. If it has a lot of print on the bottom, such as, you know, some hobby wing ESCs, uh, you may want to consider using a different type of tape as this tape is great, but only if there is a nice flat surface because it's so thin. All right, here, was, my goal was just getting a nice big piece of tape. So there we go. That's that. We'll put this off to the side. <clears throat> now to peel it, <laughs> that can actually be a pain. Uh, so tweezers will help. Or you could use a little blade as well. Or even the tips of the scissors will also help. Uh, let's see.
not tweezers. I mean, I wasn't really using regular tweezers, but this works. <clears throat> so you can peel off. And this will go here, right there. You can't really miss because of the design. So that's, that's it, just press on. I mean, this thing's on. So you press on and so that is it. Now uh, let's see, I guess the next thing I could do is the cowls. All right, so let's go ahead and cut a strip. And if you put a little too much tape, not a big deal. You can always trim off. I'll just fold it down. Here we go, so that's one. So I'll do the other side as well. Let's see. Right here. I don't know why I did this. I'm trying to match them up. All right, where's the first cowl? And uh, it's the other one that I need. All right, here we go. All right. I did make a slight mistake. I've got some paint thinking it was black, but it turned out to be a different shade of black. As you can see here, it's a metal black. It still looks good. That's why it's all shiny and metallic. All right, now for the right cowl. This is the body, body takes shape. And, all right, I can go the sides. This one goes here, and one of the things that you want to do is, if you look at those little dimples, that's where you would normally ream or drill. Those need to line up. So those have to line up there, and then this will line up here. So it's actually the bottom of this goes with the bottom of this. So don't line it up with the top, line it up with the bottom. So you're actually gonna have a little overhang uh, right here. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of tape that covers this. So if I cut a long enough piece of tape to cover this and then cut it in half, uh, then I'll have both sides so I'll have both my left and my right. So we'll do that. And then we'll go here. Whoopsie. There we go. And let's see, I need a place to hold that. So I'll place it there for now. And let's start the tape up here and then roll it down. All right, there we go. Good amount of tape. And we'll do the same thing over here. I will set it up top, just like that. And then start it in the same spot. A little bit of excess I need to trim off. All right. <clears throat> and that is it. Now, if if you really want to cut up the whole piece of tape and then just trim, that, that works as well. It's just a little more tape, not a big deal. I really do not think it needs that much tape, but it is up to the individual building it. Let's go ahead here. All 
All right, there we go. So I'll line up those little dimples. Try it again. If I'm not looking at the camera. There we go. Right there. Oops. There again. <clears throat> Just when I thought I had it. All right. There. Fine enough. This is actually really nice, really nice body, but it does take a lot. And uh, of course I would do this. <coughs> All right, this is supposed to go, there we go, fix it. Uh, I will actually put some tape there as well. Oh, I will. All right, so I need a piece of tape here. And your piece of tape there. We'll worry about that afterwards though. Alright, let's go ahead and open this up. easier so one of the things that I did not notice when I was doing the other one so if you're wondering why this one went easier is because the other one I was not watching this little flap I was letting it go back here so I was not every time I tried pressing it in it was just pushing it down uh, but here it is so I will grab two pieces of tape one for here one for here and that would be on both sides Ooh, wrong scissors, don't want to use those. <clears throat> it's just a strip of tape here. And then a thicker strip over here. And obviously mind your fingers when you're cutting. The only thing you should be cutting is the tape. There we go. I think it would be easier to do the wing first. That was a mistake. All right. <clears throat> yeah, good job. Good job. Well, I mean, I can always tape it off. Although, let me see if I can strip this one. See how strong that thing is? I mean, I'm pulling on it pretty hard. So if you do use this type of tape, like I said, it's it's relatively thin, so it works well for bodies. Uh, but removing this backing is a challenge. All right, there it is. 
is. All right, good stuff. Ta da! Now, if you leave excess like this, the only thing that's going to happen is a bunch of dirt's going to stick on there. No big deal. Just a little bit of tape. All right, so that's one side. Now I can go over to the other. So again. All right, now a thin one for the top. It'd probably still be a good idea to, to put some screws on some of these parts, regardless of how good this tape is. here in the front. All right, but that's almost all of it. All right, this one, where does this one go? Let's go here. So this one will go here. And wait, nope. Doing something wrong. Goes the other side. Nope. All right, I'm gonna have to look at this part a little more. What am I doing? Totally different area. Yeah, let's have to go over here on the outside. Yeah, right here, perfect, right there. This is where this one should go. All right, so this should go here. That goes a little, f so it, this will be inside a little, not too much. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and cut a piece for here. Pretty squared piece. So we'll do that. Uh, I guess if I cut the angle, I can have more of this tape back here. right there and then I'll have some of this come down so this will be taped quite well now uh, sometimes drilling through tape may be a pain because it, bit may catch the tape and then uh, start sort of pulling it through so that's something to keep in mind All right, so I'll deal with this first. Perfect. All right, good stuff. And so now, 
I need. So what I will do now is I'll cut a strip, but then cut it in half. We'll do this. I'll do that. All right. I'll place a piece on this ear. And then I'll place a piece over here. Right there. All right. So now this one I will trim. All right, the question is how to strip the backing. This is a pain. So with these things, I'm just poking, trying to poke just underneath the backing to lift it enough to where I can use the pliers to strip the backing off. There we go, there's one. Perfect. Perfect. Right there. And so there. All right. So, go ahead and do the other side. And I am almost finished with the body. Now, all the stickers, I know stickers give you horsepower, or so I've been told, but they're not pre-cut, and I really dislike trimming stickers, therefore I am not going to use the stickers. Uh, so that'll be up to you. Uh, I do have a video on trimming a Euro truck body. If you want to see me trim stickers, uh, there's that video. I encourage you to watch it, but... I strongly dislike trimming stickers, therefore I will not trim these. All right, there we go. Piece of tape stuck there. Oh, I'm still stuck. All right, now I'll actually use this one. Tape this. <clears throat> now, I am not going to worry about this because you remember this piece that I cut out? All right, this ear is actually going to hold it. Uh, so it's like this, uh, and I have to find it. I don't know where I left it. That's a good question. Where did I leave that piece? Uh, I wonder if I left it out painting. Huh, maybe. Anyway, I'll have to find it. If not, I can always trim another piece. But long story short, if you make a mistake like the one I made, uh, well, I guess you could always trim that one and make them even. Uh, but the thing that you can do is there's enough material there and there's a little dimple. So you can actually tape it to here and then put a screw and then just fix that little corner. It's, so it's not really such a big deal. And... You know, I keep joking that uh, when the car is running, nobody will be able to tell. And the reality is, yeah, nobody's going to be able to tell. Especially from the driver's stand. Yeah, good luck. Right, let's see. So almost have it. All right. So that one is finished.
All right, just making sure to pop it here somewhere. Oh, there it is. All right, so I just need to go and paint this, but all I will do is just tape it, ream, and then I'll put a screw through it, and that is it. All right, so I hope this build was informative, or at least entertaining. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you have not, and I'll... Catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.